from the first leg, Martinelli out injured, so Jorginho comes in. So Arsenal with Raya, White, Saliba, Gabriel and Kivior. Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice. By the way, Declan Rice is on a yellow card here. So booking tonight, he would potentially miss the first leg of the quarter-final. And then Saka, Havertz and Trossard, the front three for Arsenal. The whistle goes, it is Porto who get us underway, leading by that one goal that they scored right at the end of the first leg in the drag out. And uh, Arsenal and the red shirts with the white sleeves, white shorts, white socks, they're playing from left to right towards the clock stand in the first half. They've won themselves a throw in and play the ball back into central defence. And Porto are unchanged from the first leg. Same team that played on Friday night for them in the league as well. So Diogo Costa is the goalkeeper as the ball is played forward for Havertz to chase through the middle. But then uh, Otavio is uh, a judge to have been nudged over by Havertz. So that's a free kick to Porto on the edge of their own penalty area. Uh, the rest of the team, João Mario, Pepe, Otavio and Wendell. Then Nico Gonzalez, Pepe Aquino and Alan Varela with Francisco Conceição, Evan Nielsen and the man who scored the only goal of the tie so far, Galeno, up front. So, Matt, what about it? Well, Martin Odegaard already setting the pace out of possession. I mean, Porto had the ball across the back four and he just charged right at the two centre-backs, forcing a long ball, goes out of play, Arsenal get possession, start to build an attack and I think that's really going to be a theme. I think Porto are going to struggle, certainly in this first 20 minutes, to get hold of the ball and Arsenal in total control at the moment. So here on Five Live tonight and BBC Sounds, we've got two Arsenal and England men alongside us, Matt Upson and Theo Walcott, Champions League players both, and we're watching Arsenal now in possession. Like you, Matt, I expected Arsenal to, to try and make a really strong start to this game, and here they are playing the ball to the right-hand side to White, but Porto have... have group themselves behind the ball and I think we can already see a pattern emerging as White plays it in field blocked away to the halfway line to Saliba and then a long pass over the top which will go all the way through to goalkeeper Diogo Costa yeah, Otavia a couple of times now they try to slip the ball down the Arsenal right hand side in behind the Porto left side centre back Hebert's is making that run Ben White's looked for it once I think Saka that time just tried to feed that ball through they're not just wanting to go to feet Arsenal they're, they're happy to slip the ball in behind and really test the two centre backs as well and Matt as well every time when you make that run in behind the, the deeper and deeper they go yes yeah. we know Porto are strong at this but they, Arsenal are doing this to allow them to have space to create more in the midfield absolutely. right now absolutely I don't think they expect to get that ball do they but they're just letting Porto know that they will go behind if you want to come up too high exactly that so it's a free kick on the halfway line that Jorginho is looking to take. Still, the, the smoke from those flares is hanging in the air in the Emirates as Arsenal take this short free kick. And he has the first chance for Saka to run, which he does. Cuts in field, goodness me. That was a formidable challenge that came in from the left-back. Wendell on Saka took ball and very much man. But he has Trossard on the left-hand side with a cross, which is deflected across the box. White with the header, but it lands on the roof of the net. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say cracking tackle. I thought it, it was a brilliant challenge, really. If he wins the ball, he, he kind of went with the outside of his left boot. Wendell and really cleaned Saka out. He, he was driving into the pitch to get a shot off. It ends up out on the left-hand side with, with Trossard chips a long ball to the back post where Ben White gets up, he wins the header never really troubling Costa in goal, just goes over the crossbar but nice piece of surge of play from Arsenal again you, very positive from Saka gonna, of course you know you get the first thing he thinks is forward Yeah, I was going to say Theo you've been on the receiving end of one Ooh, or two of those goodness me many times yes and for me that was a very good tackle I've got to admit even in, you know, I'm, I'm on Saka's team so uh, yeah but man and ball at the same time I'd have to say Arsenal nil, Porto nil. And let's go to Birmingham Middlesbrough. Chris Coles. Have taken the lead. A goal for playoff chasing Middlesbrough. Scored quite brilliantly by former Birmingham player Riley McGree. Edge of the area, left foot strike into the top corner. Birmingham nil, Middlesbrough one. And in League Two, Newport on now 2 0 up on Morecambe. Ball out of play for a, a throw in to Porto, which is down near the corner flag on the left hand side. And uh, it is going to be taken by Galeno, who is taking 
all of the time that he can here. And the Arsenal fans are onto this with the whistles and the jeers. Here's the long throw then to the near post, which is headed away for Arsenal. Comes out to Wendell, who put in that challenge on uh, Bukayo Saka a few moments ago. And then Kaleno passes it all the way back into his own half. There's a, a real insight. Not that we expected any difference, Matt, of the, uh, the approach that Porto are going to take here, which is very much choreographed by their coach, Sergio Conceição. I mean, we, me and Theo were looking at the warm-up and the amount of time they spent defending set plays. I mean, corners they practiced, wide free kicks they practiced. I mean, they're, they're really set up here to frustrate Arsenal this evening. And here they are with their top scorer, Evan Nielsen, who's on the left-hand side. 21 goals for him this season. Then out to the left-hand side, Wendell attempts to cross. That's blocked on the edge of the penalty area, but it comes out and is hooked out of play by Saka for another throw-in. This is level with the edge of the... Um, penalty area and then rather unhelpfully actually someone from the crowd throws the ball back on which bounces onto the pitch and then uh, while that was happening Wendell actually threw the other ball off the pitch so now Galeno has got to walk down the slope and off the pitch up to the advertising hoardings get the ball back he wasn't in a hurry was he he was not and uh, the cross from uh, Galeno is deflected out for a throw-in on the halfway line to the visitors. And John, sorry, that's what we were talking about before the game, how they're going to frustrate. This is the experience that's eating in this young Porto team right now, even so, they, they frustrate people. I mean, do you feel that they've, they've taken the sting out of that first five minutes, really, haven't they? Just they've, by slowing it down, taking time, getting the ball, you know, all, all these kind of tactics, they're just trying to slow the tempo of this game, Porto. Exactly that, and even watching now the first few minutes, Arsenal actually don't mind them having the ball, because it allows them to access that counter-attack, which obviously Arsenal live on at times, but uh, it's looking very different to the first leg already, I believe. Yeah, as uh, the ball is hit forward from the back by Otavio, that's gone all the way out to the right-hand side, and uh, João Mario very nearly got there, the, the right-back, this attacking right-back. But it is cleared away for Arsenal towards the halfway line where Havertz takes it down. Uh, it did look as though there was an arm involved there, even though that's been disputed by probably hundreds of Arsenal fans who are getting to their feet and shaking their fists in the air. But it is a, a free kick for Porto, forward of the centre circle. Yeah, he's a handball, isn't it? He just yeah. controls it with his right arm, Havertz. Doesn't quite get his body all the way across to get in line with the ball. And it strikes him on his right arm, but... Kivio with the, with the clearance, we haven't really spoken much about him, but it's a big night for him, the Arsenal left-back coming in there. I think this it's a massive game for him in that left-back position, Jakob Kivio. Yes, it is, with Zinchenko on the bench, and, and actually Tommy Asu is on the bench as well tonight as he comes back from injury. Porto take this free kick square, and then it's lifted right-footed into the edge of the penalty area, and then it's won back actually by Pepe outside the, the penalty area, who continues his run through the middle, the captain, the central defender, and he's still going, even though the ball is at the feet of David Raya, which is an interesting one. Pepe has actually taken up a position uh, out there towards the, the right-hand side and plays it back to his goalkeeper, Diogo Costa, who clears left-footed out towards the right-hand side. And now Porto play it back to Pepe, who puts his foot on the ball and then uh, looks in field, gnarled features of Pepe, shaven head, as short as it'll go. He's got some strapping on his right wrist as well, which just adds to the whole picture. And now it's played forward by Otavio, but that's deflected forward, and Ben White is able to take it away for Arsenal and win it. They're throwing down in the Arsenal right-back area. Well, Matt, you, you did talk about how Arsenal would look to make this strong, fast, pacey, all-energy start. Porto haven't let them. No, they haven't. You're absolutely spot on. They've, they've managed the game brilliantly. They've not allowed Arsenal to get into that rhythm, to start smothering the opposition like they love to do in that first 10 minutes at home and they've they've just slowed it down they're looking comfortable Pepe's on the ball he took half an hour dwelling on the ball a moment ago to decide whether to pass it and like Theo said Arsenal haven't really forced the issue though to be honest it's, they're not really pushed Porto in that sense no and I feel like this is where you're looking for players like I think Declan's just only just had his first sort of touch of a throw in and that's the sort of personnel you need to get involved in the game very soon Saka forward from him Havertz tried to flick it on but Pepe was behind it, put a full right foot through that. Cleared away by Saliba overhead towards the halfway line. Uh, and then it bounces down centrally to the impressive number 22, Alan Varela. He's one of the, the latest off the Argentina production line. He's been signed last summer from Boca Juniors. And uh, he is very much attracting attention all around Europe for what he's done with Porto this season. 
long ball from the back from goalkeeper Costa which is deflected out of play for a throw-in to Porto out on the right-hand side and they take that back into their own half well it, it, it's really bringing back to me the match that we saw three weeks ago in the first leg in the Dragao very similar sort of pattern to it although Odegaard has won the ball back from Otavio in the defensive third and now Odegaard cutting in from the right-hand side left-footed ball played in crucially there was a, a trip there a slip in the area by Rice still in the penalty area a stretch and away and a clearance by uh, Gonzalez but Arsenal now trying to get some rhythm and some momentum going here that's what the crowd sense as well they're all on their feet to my left here as Arsenal go back to the halfway line and then under pressure Gabriel has to turn and play it all the way back to, to Raya yeah Martin Odegaard again forcing the issue We've touched on him before the game about how important he is and it's the two big impacts have been out of possession already in this game. He's pressing so high. He's the highest Arsenal player beyond Havertz, trying to harass the Porto back four, and he forced a mistake out of Otavio and very nearly created a goal-scoring opportunity. Uh, elsewhere, crawling nil, Notts County one, Wickham one, Wigan nil, and Lincoln two, Cambridge nil. All latest scores. Still nil-nil between Barcelona and Napoli, so that's 1-1 one, one on aggregate. Uh, Conor McNamara is keeping across that tonight. Middlesbrough winning 1-0 as Arsenal play a ball forward for Trossard to chase, but that's tidied up by Pepe and then chipped forward by Diogo Costa and then taken down by João Mario, who is challenged, and that is given as a free kick against uh, Declan Rice, and it's a free kick to Porto halfway inside their own half. They might not have many more fouls like that, Declan Rice. The referee will start to think about yellow cards. I mean, it's not a bad foul at all, but you're in that midfield area, you start to top up those kind of challenges and he's on that possibility of a suspension Declan has to be a little bit careful and again Arsenal are asking the question of making those runs in behind and I just feel like they need to be pushing up the field a lot more there's a bit more of a unit I feel like they're a bit sort of stretched at this moment in time and creating Porto to have that possession on the ball which Arsenal aren't really equipped to do at the moment uh, as Gabriel wins a, a goal kick just played it into Ponces down, it bounced through. Arsenal take a quick goal kick. They're in business now down the right hand side with Saka, who beats his man into the penalty area. Left foot shot, juggled by the goalkeeper Costa, who's able to recover to his left and claw it away from going out for a corner. But that's kept the ball in play. Odegaard square, Jorginho back to Odegaard. Odegaard trying to find a way through, but too many defenders in there. And it was deflected behind, however, for a corner. That is what you wanted to see, man. Yeah, Bakayo Saka, he's on a mission this evening. Just his body language, how he's setting up, he's driving inside. I mean, he's so positive with his decision-making. He goes on the outside. It's a great piece of play, wasn't it, Theo? Oh, it's, it's very clever the way he gets his body in front of the man as well, just before he enters the penalty area. The player cannot make a touch, otherwise he goes down, and it's a penalty. We've had 12 goalless minutes, so Porto still lead. 1-0 on aggregate, but first corner of the match, so let's see what Arsenal have up their sleeve here with the, the set pieces. Players grouped beyond the far side of the six-yard box. Saka takes it short, actually, to Trossard. Then back to Saka, right-footed ball across the area. Odegaard, left foot shot, low and wide of Costa's left post, probably by two or three feet. Nice set play, well worked short. But the ball's coming across Martin Odegaard. He has to pause and wait a little bit. But the amount of Porto bodies coming out to the edge of the box as it gets set back to him. There's probably about four or five blue and white shirts just charging out to him. I don't think the ball would have made it through on target. But Arsenal starting to apply the pressure and Porto having to throw quite a lot of bodies in to deal with it. And I don't think as well that was a sort of set piece that they were practising before the game. Porto. No, I don't think. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> That is Theo Walcott and Matt Upson who are here inside the Emirates Stadium with us on BBC Radio 5 Live tonight. Listen as well if you're on the move on the BBC Sounds as Porto take a, a throw in. And a shout there that I think the ball had been deflected out of play. There's a foul throw, John. It's a clear oh, foul, foul throw and everyone saw it by the, the, the linesman and referee. Yeah, which... Uh, is uh, taken back to Otavio, who's put under pressure by Havertz. Otavio turns and clears that left footed to the halfway line, but that's headed forward by Gabriel. Uh, Trossard, nice flick into the path of Rice, middle of the half. Rice actually carries the ball out towards the left hand side, takes on Pepe around the outside, manages to get the cross in towards the corner of the penalty area where it was intercepted by Varela. 
and, and Porta, Porto, João Mario turning, doesn't get it away, he's been dispossessed, João Mario, Arsenal are all over it, Rice, and uh, then it's dragged back, right for the ball in by Trossard, Saka tried to get there with a header, Wendell though, the left back came across and managed to get the challenge in, well defended, it has to be said by the left back. Oh, it's top defending for Wendell, doesn't go to sleep, doesn't allow Saka across the face of him, who's got real purpose about his movement this evening, does a really good piece of fullback play comes all the way across to the near post and he just stops Bukayo Saka winning the ball getting a glancing header he actually forces Saka to not contact the ball properly but it's that presence and pressure that Wendell applies that forces that to happen top defending Theo it's a fascinating Champions League tussle this isn't it because Arsenal are trying to get into their rhythm and Porto are doing their darndest to stop them they really are and again I'm watching Pepe on the outside here and how calm and composed he is he's just sort of shrubbed Declan Rice off to, to feed the ball off for a goal kick with ease and that just shows the experience in the man he has and going back to the sack oh, it's, uh, it's one back for Porto and a left footed shot bounces away from Evan Nielsen from the edge of the penalty area danger but the shot wide on the left foot from Evan Nielsen dragged it wide by two or three feet goal kick to Arsenal but there is a warning uh, and uh, Barcelona and Napoli what's happening in that match Connor? first goal of the evening goes to Barcelona 20 year old Fermin Lopez third chance he's had in the game already this time set up by Yamin Lamal Barcelona lead 1-0 on the night 2-1 on uh, aggregate thank you Connor. Arsenal nil, Porto nil here in North London on what is now a dry night after an extremely wet day in the capital I guess those Several thousand Porto fans arriving in London were thinking absolutely typical London weather. As Havertz plays it back towards the halfway line, Saliba then in field to Gabriel, just puts his foot on the ball and then passes it back to his. You didn't, you didn't get wet on the way to your UEFA briefing, did you, John? Uh, I did actually, yes. I got, I got wet on the way there and on the if, way. If back. we get a lull in the game, maybe you can fill us in on that. <laughs> It's all rather interesting. Uh, yeah, good. I'm pleased that you followed it. I'll be asking questions later. <laughs> Maybe in the last half hour of Five Live Sport tonight. That's something to stay with us for. Here's Saliba, who plays it to White on the right-hand side. White pulls it back and then uh, just taps it back towards Saliba, who again hits the ball through the middle. Pacey oh. pass to Saka, then to Odegaard, who is dispossessed by Varela. Did well there, uh, Varela. Thought he was away at Odegaard, but Varela came in, just got a touch. Not like Martin Odegaard either to re not release that a little bit sooner. Could have played that one touch, I felt, but, but Kyle Saka is raising his game. He's on another level here this evening. Yeah, Saka again. Saka infield, Odegaard. That's more like it, a first-time pass, but he passed it straight at uh, Wendell, who was able to step in. And then there's a foul on Jorginho by Evan Nielsen. Jorginho went down howling at the skies there. Clement Turpin might have heard him, even, even in amongst all of this din, and he won the free kick. Do you know what, as well, there, yeah, he's done tremendously well to win the free kick, but I think the way he's gone down as well is it's made the referee's mind up to give a free kick. I mean, Arsenal had the opportunity there, Odegaard and Saka on 2v1 in the final third. This is where referees need to play that advantage, and he didn't do it there, and I felt Jorginho made his mind up for him pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, what's happening, Barcelona and Napoli now, Conor McNamara? Remarkable start to the game. Barcelona loud lead by two goals to nil on the night and 3 1 an aggregate against a Napoli team who don't know what's hit them. 17 minutes played. Jao Cancelo has hit it after it came back off the post to him. A straightforward finish, adding to Lopez's opener. What a start for Barcelona. 2 0 the lead in the night. Uh, and bottom of League One, Carlisle uh, are 1 1 with Barnsley. Carlisle 1. Barnsley 1 and Newport 2, Morecambe 1 are later scores. Right, Arsenal have got this free kick, they've got themselves organised now, so another set piece. Four players standing offside, then all together, step back onside, then it's curled in, and the ball is side-footed over the top of the crossbar, and I did not see an offside flag. Gabriel got the touch. Yeah, I think the flag did go up, John. But think, it would have been off. Yeah. I, I, I think the flag would have, I think it would have been offside, but there was one player, one Porto player, that wasn't quite on the same page. And I think Arsenal were just about offside, but it may well have been uh, Evan Ilsen who just didn't quite squeeze up at the same time. Not to throw a centre-forward under the bus for, for, for making the defensive uh, unit look bad, but 
No, that, it's fine. That, that's generally what happens, Theo. Oh, 100%. I mean, Matt, you've got to be brave there as a whole unit and organise. <laughs> well, Pepe was, Pepe was getting his hand. He was being quite forceful in terms of everybody stay up, not get dragged back by Arsenal, trying to push them deeper by standing offside. They held their nerve just about there, Porto. That was a brilliant piece of choreography as well by the Arsenal players who uh, all, all step forward together and all step back together. It's like watching Top of the Pops. The full Monty, John. The full Monty, exactly. Pan's <laughs> people, do you remember Pan's <laughs> people, Matt? No, I don't remember that. Do you not? No, no, I no. definitely don't remember no, that. No, I didn't I'm ask you to. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're on your own there, John. <laughs> Kel Kelly, Kelly remembers Pan's people, without doubt. As uh, Arsenal send a long pass forward towards Trossard on the left-hand side. And then uh, in comes the challenge from João Mario. Yeah, we'll be talking Pan's people in the final half hour of Five Live Sport as well tonight, so, so it won't just be the Champions League reformat. Uh, Arsenal nil, Porto nil. A goal in the eight o'clock kickoff between Bolton and Oxford. Adam Cotia and Bolton lead Oxford by one goal to nil. Lovely approach play. Nathaniel Ogbetta scoring the goal with a rising left foot shot after George Thomason had shifted the ball onto him on the left of the penalty area. Bolton one, Oxford nil. Also Shrewsbury nil, Exeter one, and uh, Grimsby one, MK Dons nil. And Wimbledon won, Gillingham nil are all latest scores. Arsenal nil, Porto nil. And already almost halfway through the first half here. And as we were saying on drive a little earlier, you know, the longer that this game goes goalless, the, the edgier it will get for the Arsenal supporters as Arsenal try to reach the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time for 14 years. They are a stubborn opponent, aren't they? Just, you know, you, just the feel of this game now. They've just sucked that kind of energy out of the Arsenal start, Porto. And it hasn't been pretty. They've not done anything spectacular. They've just been awkward to play against, and they're doing it really well. Uh, ball down the right hand side in from Concesao. Oh, it's reached Evan Nielsen with a shot, and that's saved by Raya. Bounces across the penalty area. Concesao is onto this on his left foot. Concesao's cross, that's deflected. Evan Nielsen heads it across the penalty area. Then it comes back. Wendell with a shot, which is also blocked on the edge of the penalty area and bounces out wickedly off at a 45 degree angle for a throw into Porto. Danger. Yeah, just went to sleep a little bit there. Arsenal got done down the right hand side. Not enough pressure coming out to the shot from Evan Nielsen and David Raya has to go down to his left-hand side. Luckily, it wasn't the best of efforts. It wasn't right in the corner, so he made a comfortable save. Here they go again. Evan Nielsen with half a chance at the near post after Concesao's low cross. But Gabriel was able to step across there and it's cleared away to the halfway line. You know, Arsenal, they're in a tussle. They're in a battle here tonight, Theo. I tell you, it's just a warning sign just to make sure that all the players are switched on and... Obviously, Raya there making that save. He was focused at that moment in time, and like Matt says, they just need to be a bit more. I mean, Raya's come right out there. Yeah, right out of his well. penalty area. Raya into the fullback position with uh, Galeno chasing after it, but the goalkeeper got there first and put it out for a, a throw to the visitors, the two times European champions. Arsenal, of course, have never won the great trophy. Six English clubs have won it, but not Arsenal. Arsenal, the team to have played more matches in the knockout stages of the Champions League than anyone else without winning it. Long ball forward, which is headed forward for Arsenal by Kivio to Trossard, who is challenged over there. The ball runs out of play. A throw in for Porto. I thought for a minute there they were going to take a quick throw. How silly of me. <laughs> You're joking, John. I think they, they wanted to and then all of a sudden remembered the game the, plan. The, yeah, their Let's just slow it down. Yeah. Somebody will have shown them that on an iPad, no doubt, before the game. <laughs> As uh, Costa, Diogo Costa, passes it out to Nico Gonzalez, the number 16, the former Barcelona youngster. They are, they're a very effective midfield three, Pepe Aquino, as the, the most advanced of the three. And here it is now with uh, Otavio, the youngster of the two central defenders. He's 20 years younger than his central defensive partner, Pepe. Long one forward for Galeno, who miscontrols that out of play for a goal kick. Galeno is now in the Brazil squad, by the way, Matt, for the, uh, for the England match. They play England and Spain later this month. You'll hear that on Five Live. And he's taking the place of Martinelli. Yeah, Martinelli's I mean, out injured. And, and he's very different, isn't he? I mean, he's, he's that right footer, but wanting to come inside all the time, very much wanting to come in and get shots off. I know Martinelli can do that, but for me, Martinelli with his pace, I mean, 
him on the outside of you is, is just a nightmare because he can literally not just go on the outside, he comes all the way round along the goal line and then he's looking to, for those cutbacks from the goal line, whereas I just feel that Galeno is a little bit more of a player that likes to link up with the striker and a bit more like how Trossard will play on the left-hand side. Uh, League Two leaders Mansfield have equalised at Tranmere, that's 1-1. One, one. Uh, Walsall won Barrow nil in League Two as well and uh, Arsenal in possession inside their own half, the Premier League leaders. But at the moment, the Premier League leaders would be going out with this scoreline in the last 16. Would be an eighth consecutive exit at this stage of the competition as Evan Nielsen fouls Saliba. I mean, they're, they're stopping Arsenal coming through the middle really well. I have to say, they're packing out that midfield, not allowing those triangles and quick passes between Jorginho, Rice, Odegaard into the front. They're forcing it wide out to Ben White or into the channels and the flanks all the time and then hoping to defend the middle of the box really well. And Porto, see, they get numbers back so quickly. As soon as you put it out to people like Ben White, there's numbers on him straight away. And again, you, you're asking Ben White now to make the runs in behind. And we need to see Odegaard, Declan Rice get on a little bit more this ball right now because Porto are really defying that right now. Three and four, Arsenal. Level the edge of the Porto penalty area. White takes it into Havertz. It's cleared away. Uh, Conte Sao is, is well out of his coaching area, the, the Porto coach. Just in front of us in our low-level position here. Fourth official, no doubt, will be onto that as it's played back for Arsenal, back to David Raya. Out of his penalty area, long pass from Raya downfield, looking for Trossard, that's headed down and away by Juan Mario. Bounces out to Declan Rice on the left-hand side, then infield towards Jorginho, who uh, looks to the right, then turns, gives it back to the left. And now uh, Trossard, Trossard takes on Juan Mario, beats him, goes for the byline into the near post, where the head up from Declan Rice, who had to adjust there very quickly, and he could only head it down and well wide of the near post. Yeah, he's holding the bridge of his nose there, definitely. I think he just got the ball straight across the face. It was so close to him, the cross. He was way in advance of that near post. But Trossard this time gets on the outside, gets onto his left foot. And Pepe is the man applying a lot of pressure to Declan Rice in that challenge. He really does get tight to him. It is Shrewsbury nil, Exeter 2 now, both sides down the bottom end of of League One and uh, Bolton Oxford Adam Cotia it is 2-0 to Bolton this time it's a bit of a mix up by Oxford at the back uh, Greg Lee colliding with his goalkeeper Jamie Cumming and Josh Dacres Cogley nipped in to notch his s Bolton's second goal of the night 2-0 Arsenal with the ball on the edge of their own penalty area Rice plays it out to Kivio and the Polish international brings it up towards the halfway line then Jorginho curls a low pass Ben White's on the move Saka down the right wing Saka against Wendell the defender back pedals and then shoulder to shoulder the two of them come together Saka hits the turf and the ball runs behind for what is given as a goal kick but again there Saka's been positive he, this time he, he feels like he wants to go on the outside and again he's gonna, he didn't win that battle there but as well he's going to keep his defender guessing there and again he, the excitement he gets when he has the ball Saka at his feet people just rise to that so it's just going to keep on asking the question of his fullback is against right you, now. You feel Wendell's getting a little bit more confident with him. Last couple of times he's got tight, he's won the ball. That time they're facing him at 1v1, but Saka for me is the player. Looks like he's going to make something happen for Arsenal at the moment. Yeah, Wendell, who, who's also in the Brazil squad yeah. for Wembley, incidentally, yeah. the left back. As uh, Porto bring it forward on the right-hand side. Porto know that this scoreline would be enough. I mean, you wouldn't say that they're playing for a draw as the ball is played in deep to the back post. Headed across by Galeno and a diving Raya makes the save as Evan Nielsen tried to get there, but it was dangerous. Excellent cross from the right-hand side. That's oh, a brilliant ball from Consasau with his left foot. And it's Galeno at the back post with the header back across. Brilliant play. But now it's Arsenal who attacks. Saka up to the edge of the area now for White, who lifts it across to the back oh. post. And a crucial, a crucial touch with that old bald head from Pepe to deflect it beyond the far post and take it away from Arsenal for a corner. And Pepe hits the turf. Wow, that old bald head did its job, didn't it? Just the faintest of touches from Pepe. He knows where Havertz is. This, for me, is about position. It's about checking your shoulder. He doesn't allow too big a distance for Havertz to pull off the back of him. He drops and drops. It's a lovely ball to the back post. It's so inviting for Havertz to just come onto that back post and just head it in the back of the net. And Pepe gets the slightest of glances just to flick the ball behind for a corner. Good awareness from him.
Pepe's didn't need treatment. He's on his feet. They're, they're defending a corner, so they, he couldn't do that, could he? He had to stay on the field. So here is the corner into the near post from Rice. Headed. Porto head got to that first and it's cleared away. It's volleyed away by João Mario out for a throw to Arsenal. Uh, two balls on the pitch now. It was thrown back, I think, by someone in the crowd. I think it was thrown from the actual from the Porto bench, to be honest. Oh, was it? Yeah, it looked like it. Anyway, it uh, bounced onto the field. More spoiler tactics, John. Well, there we go. So Arsenal wanted to take that quick throw. They couldn't. There's a half an hour played now. 30 minutes have been played. And it is still goalless here. Arsenal nil, Porto nil. It looks like Barcelona are heading through to the uh, quarterfinals as uh, Gonzalez puts in a challenge on Saka that leaves Saka on the ground. Arsenal take a quick free kick, but the referee says, no, 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 you'll have to bring that back. As um, Ben White took it away there and rolled it across. But it, uh, Arsenal can set themselves for this free kick. I, I'm pretty sure Saka's up here. Yeah, you do. I mean, I have seen yellow cards in the Champions League for tackles like this, to be honest. He kicks right through the back of Saka. That definitely could be a yellow card for, for Nico Gonzalez. And, you know, in that area of the pitch, the two centre midfield players, they've really had a good start to the game, been very solid, not allowed Arsenal a lot of joy in the middle of the park. Everything's forced wide. But a yellow card for him could really change his mindset a little bit not make him quite as aggressive and quite as sharp into the tackle which could have an impact on the game for sure I must say the atmosphere inside the stadium now it's absolutely vibrant the goal goes in a home goal goes in you'll know about it free kick Odegaard eventually takes it out comes the goalkeeper Costa punched it across the penalty area to Saka Saka on the right plays it couple of defenders there it's a combination of uh, Wendell and Pepe Aquino and it bounces out of play. It's Conceição actually, and then uh, Wendell has, has, has sat down. The referee immediately puts his his uh, left arm in the air and points to the wrist to tell the crowd that he's going to add this time on. Well, time will tell on that front. But Wendell uh, is did he did he get the ball in the possibly in the chop possibly in the face? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It looks like he's just kind of holding his jaw and mouth as as Saka tries to cross the ball. It just. He tried to pass it actually, and it spun up off Conte Sal's boot into the jaw of Wendell. But I can't imagine that to have caused too much damage, Theo. But again, the damage, the, damage it's, the damage it's causing right now is yeah. to the Arsenal fans. It's really frustrating them. Yeah. You can feel like it's feeding into the players right now. Absolutely. So it's a corner. Saka is waiting there next to the ball, just down to our right, next to where the, the white flag with the gunner on it is hanging loosely. Saka plays it into the near post, but that's headed away by Galeno at the near post. Out of play for a throw-in to Arsenal. It's Saka himself will take. It's deflected into the penalty area, but all the way through to goalkeeper Costa, who is able to drop forward and grab it into his chest. I know, by the way, the whole thing about if the if the medical staff come on and, and, uh, and treat a player, I know some people don't like that, but the player has got to come off the field for 30 seconds. But it, it's because of this scenario that that's been brought in, Matt, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, from looking at the replay, there's, there's no way there's a need for Wendell to go down and have to come off the pitch. The ball spun up and just hit him in the jaw from close range is not a significant problem. So, you know, it works well in that sense. And as well, he's, he's learnt from the best because Pepe did it previous yeah. corner as well. Yeah. So, again, Pepe's probably had a word with him to say, look, slow it down. Yeah, there's no yeah. rush at yeah. all. That's he's not coming on. Yeah, that's definitely what it said on the iPad. Um, Half times coming in in the 7:45s. I'll tell you some of them in a moment. But news on Barcelona and Napoli, Connor. Cracking game this. A third goal of the night. A first for the Italians. Barcelona lead Napoli 2-1 now. After defender Amir Romani swept it home. He scored two weeks ago in Serie A against Sassuolo. He's got this back to a one-goal deficit. Deficit once more. Barcelona lead Napoli 3-2 at aggregate for now. I must say, this match here is a full-on Champions League tie as well. Arsenal against Porto. Porto third currently in the Portuguese League as uh, Conceição wins the ball back from Trossard. That might have been a foul. Conceição carrying it forward, gives it to João Mario on the right-hand side. Trossard gets to his feet and comes back into position and Porto go back towards the halfway line. Arsenal nil, Porto nil since the first leg. Porto 
actually produced a, a really eye-catching result when they beat Benfica, last season's champions, 5-0, which equaled their record victory against Benfica, one of the famous big three of Portuguese football, as uh, Ben White wins a header on the edge of the area, but actually Galeno is in an offside position, and it's a free kick to Arsenal on the edge of their own box, and we've got just over ten minutes to go to half-time now. Yeah, the French referee is really allowing the game to flow, actually, isn't he? He's not really flagging up. There's a couple of fouls or maybe a yellow card he could have handled out, but he's just allowing the, the, the game to go, which I actually quite like, to be honest. It just allows both teams to get into their rhythm and play what the style that they're playing, but haven't Porto done their homework, John? I mean, they've, they've really set about this game brilliantly. They're just stifling Arsenal at the moment. Long pass downfield, this is for Saka to chase, but he got a touch on that, and that's deflected it out of play for a throw-in to Porto halfway inside their own half. Yeah, I know, I know over the years, he's attracted interest, hasn't he, Sergio Conceição, for uh, what he's done at Porto, almost seven years as their coach, the, the, the longest serving Porto coach in the club's history. I mean, he, he hasn't stopped trying to adjust everyone's position on the pitch. I mean, he's literally orchestrating this whole performance from that the edge of that technical area. And as well, you can't really miss those shoes he's wearing. Right? They're <laughs> brand new, aren't they? They right are. Right now. Yeah. Looking shiny. Very good. You've got a pair of those at home, right? No, I haven't. John, um, I the, might do. I the, can see John in a pair of them. Yeah, they're shown off by a slightly short trouser as well, yes. aren't they, which accentuated. Arsenal nil, Porto nil, as Gabriel just sees the ball out of play to throw in. Over there on the right-hand side, Pepe Aquino is going to to leave this, of course he is, for Joao Mario to wander up to take this throw in. So it is still nil-nil. Arsenal, either side of losing that first leg on a run of eight consecutive wins in the Premier League. That's why they are top of the table. Long pass from central, but that's beyond Galeno and bounces out of play for a throw in to Arsenal. Halfway inside their own half. Arsenal top of the table on goal difference, more wins than anyone else in the Premier League, more goals than anyone else in the Premier League, and the best defensive record currently in the Premier League. Oh, the, the talk fewest of champions, goals. that John, Well, that's, you know, <laughs> when I looked at that this morning, that, yeah. was, that was my thought. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I saw that, and obviously there's been a huge influx of goals of late, hasn't there? You know, there's six nils, five nils, what have you, but which has just so. bumped up their goal difference unbelievably. Yeah. Yeah. Even so. Yeah, no, no, it's not to take anything away. Uh, so it is still nil-nil here as half-time approaching, no goals yet for either team. Uh, however, a goal in the match involving the League One leaders, Chris Wise. And they're talking about a title down here as well, Portsmouth 1, Burton nil, right on half-time, a penalty from Kaseni Yangi dinked it down the middle, half-time whistle's gone, Pompey 1, Burton nil. Uh, Arsenal on the attack, we're going to go to Birmingham in a moment, half-time there, but Arsenal with Jorginho giving it to Declan Rice. And now as half-time approaches, what, six, seven minutes away, plus at a time, and there will be, there should be plenty of that. We'll see. Arsenal are reaching the point where it would be a very good time to score a goal. Of course, Porto will be thinking the same thing. As White uh, is dispossessed, it's just taken away from him by Evan Nielsen, and now he has Wendell in the left-back position, in field to Otavio, left-footed clearance from him, where it is uh, bouncing out of play, I think. It's right in front of Conceição, and Saliba and Evan Nielsen were, were, and uh, Galeno were wrestling one another, and actually a yellow card's come out for uh, Saliba yeah. for that. That's a little bit harsh, I have to say. Do you think that Sergio Conceição, right behind the uh, referee's eye line of that, making a big deal of it, influenced him in any way? Possibly. Possibly, I mean, he is jumping up and down with his arms in the air, waving. But when you look at it on slow motion, Saliba doesn't win the ball and he does have his arms around. That's the defender in you, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I'll be praying for a yellow card. Yeah. There if and I, was and, one and, of the and I think when you look at it, 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 it was it was clumsy. And one of those, he had he had all that field to yeah. to run into as and well. The ball so. just skipped into the space, didn't it? It Which really did. Doesn't help. Porto go back to their goalkeeper. So we'll go to St Andrews and Chris Colt lead Birmingham by a goal to nil Riley McGree's stunner from range has them moving to within five points of the playoffs worrying times for Birmingham a point and a place above the relegation zone they've offered very little and booed off at the break Birmingham nil Middlesbrough one uh, all the league one half times are in now so what's the news on Derby Reading Tom Gale 
It's nil-nil, John, but the hosts are asking the questions. Best chance, and Erin Cashin diving header clipped the left post. As it stands, Derby dropping out of the automatic spots. Half-time, Derby nil, Reading nil. Great run from João Mario wow. here, up from right back. Took it all the way to the edge of the penalty area and then rolled it out to the right where he expected Francisco Conces out to be and he wasn't there. I mean, how, qu how quick did he look there, he John? like me, but he, <laughs> he? He, he, just, he? he just drove with the ball from the right-back position. He went past about three players and he actually laid the ball to his right thinking he had another player up alongside him. The problem is no one could keep up with him. No one could keep up with him. It was like no my chance. days. Back. There was no one there. No one there. I suspect we'll see him is at the Euros, is, by the way. He's in the Portugal squad. Yeah. Is that why you're always passing the ball into space then? <laughs> no, yes. one, no one was quick enough to keep up That's with you. exactly right, yeah. <laughs> Trossard back to Odegaard. Odegaard to Trossard! Scores! Super finish from the angle! No pass Diogo Costa! And Arsenal have produced the goal just before half-time. 1-0 to Mikel Arteta's side. But a super finish from Trossard. Wow, super composure, Leandro Trossard. He brings something different to Martinelli. And this is what it is. It's that kind of composure, this technical awareness. Porto don't quite deal with the long ball well enough. Wendell knocks the ball into midfield. And then there's a nice little interchange between Trossard and Martin Odegaard, but it's a lovely ball. He slips it inside Jao Mario, whose position here for me isn't the best. He doesn't go with Trossard, doesn't look over his shoulders, isn't aware of that run coming from out to in. It goes between him and Pepe. Lovely slip ball from Odegaard. And then it's about the right foot finish. He's so composed, slots it along the ground into the far corner. Lovely work goal from Arsenal. I mean, that's exactly what Trossard's about. I feel like he's been putting this Arsenal team to create that moment. We spoke about that moment at the start of the game. And Trossard, for me, what allows him to have that space to have the shot is his first touch. He has all the time in the world. You've got to remember, when you're in the penalty area, no one wants to touch you. You have all the time. Take your time. And he used the side of his foot, like the old Thierry Henry. Even myself, I must say, actually, at times. But beautiful finish. This is going to show what Porto are made of right now. 1-0 to the Arsenal. What a relief for the Emirates, or at least the home section of the Emirates. The goal coming in the 41st minute. And now Arsenal have got to be careful here as it's played forward for Conceição on the right-hand side. I think Pepe Aquino might have been caught late on the halfway line as he played that pass. Uh, shot in from Pepe Aquino, but he's dragged out well wider than he opposed. Uh, so the half-time scores in League One that you haven't heard already. Carlisle 1, Barnsley 0. It's Fleetwood 0, Bristol Rovers 0. Leighton Orient 0, Port Vale 0. Lincoln 2, Cambridge 0. Northampton 0, Blackpool 0. Uh, Shrewsbury 0, Exeter 3. Wickham 1, Wigan 0. And uh, in the 8 o'clock kickoff, it remains, as we uh, last heard, Bolton 2. Oxford nil. I'll bring you the League Two half-time scores in a moment, but uh, we've just got a, a stoppage here. Was that Aquino? Just yeah, I mean he gets upended from Gabriel. It actually looks like a yellow card to be honest, but the referee waved to play on, and you know they had an effort on goal Porto, but he hasn't brought the game back and put, given a yellow card to Gabriel. But it was a really late tackle actually. He did catch Pepe Aquino, but I mean it's been a nearly perfect first half performance from Porto, hasn't it? I just think that, that João Mario, the right-back, went to sleep a little bit. It's the first defensive error we've seen in the game. And credit to Arsenal, they've had the quality to spot that, unlock it, and actually capitalise on it. So credit to Arsenal for that. And that's what Arsenal have been doing all season, That honestly. They've been at people's heels constantly in the game. They sort of wind you down. And now, like I said before, we're going to see the Porto there. I think Havertz has gone, gone in there as well. Right there. Yeah, that's a, a challenge on Gonzalez, Nico Gonzalez. And uh, and I think, is it Sergio Conceição has said something out of, out of line? And the, and the referee actually ran about five yards towards him here before the official has just wandered into the, the, the technical area. Next, I think it's maybe someone on the bench behind Sergio Conceição. Anyway, that's a ticking off. It was, yeah. Be a yellow card next time. Yeah, I don't think he was asking him where he got his trainers from. No, I don't it? think he was, no. <laughs> 
uh, half times in League Two. Wimbledon one, Gillingham nil, uh, Bradford City nil, Forest Green one. Forest Green can get out of the bottom two tonight if they if they win because Colchester's game is postponed. Uh, Crawley nil, Notts County one as Porto attack towards the edge of the area, but that's headed away by Saliba. Um, Crew nil, Sutton nil, Grimsby one, MK Dons nil, Newport County two, Morecambe one, Swindon nil, Accrington nil, Tranmere one, the leaders Mansfield one, Walsall one, Barrow nil, and Wrexham nil, Harrogate Town nil. Throw in for Porto, half time approaching. Galeno with that long throw it is, which is headed across the box by Pepe, and in comes the challenger. Heart and mouth there as Trossard put in that challenge, and a Porto player went down to the ground and, uh, and one minute of added time at the end of the first half <laughs> and now Declan Rice has squared up with uh, Otavio and, and Declan Rice has got to keep his cool here and the players know it Odegaard knows it yeah he's on a yellow card here he is I mean he's got he's, he's got to just stay calm but meanwhile the Arsenal bench and Mikel Arteta are looking at the fourth official going one minute how can we only have one well, minute well, of added time? Well, so much for Clement Turpin pointing to his wrist. Yeah. Pack highway robbery. Yeah. It's a throw in, but uh, we've got a stoppage because there, there's a Porto player down inside the penalty area. His own teammate kicks him. I mean, he, I think it's um, Gonzalez, Nico Gonzalez, who just tries to swivel and volley a header that's into the box. And it's uh, Pepe, Pepe Aquino who's yeah. coming across and he just volleys straight through the side of his own teammate. And then after that, Declan Rice has a bit of a square up with Otavio and a couple of other players come and get involved. I mean, it's nothing too much. But I actually think, I know they're complaining there's only one minute, but I think now's a good time for Arsenal just to come in at half-time. They've got themselves back in this game. They're going to have to have a little shift up about how they're going to approach this match. And I think half-time will be a good thing for Mikel Arteta yeah, at the moment. I really do believe that. I think right now, yeah, it's... the. Arsenal feel like now they can sort of regroup, have a different type of plan now when they are leading the game. Porto are going to have to play slightly different in the second half. Yes, they're going to slow down. Yes, they're going to be frustrating. Of course, they've been at the whole of this half. You know, I feel like Aquino there. Yes, I do feel like he is actually hurt. I think it's more his landing as well um, yeah. that's caused this issue right now. But yeah, I think Arsenal got to be very pleased with this, and particularly Trossard. I think Trossard before this goal, I felt he was actually struggling out of the two, two wingers, actually, me being a winger himself. But that alone, that goal is just going to breed more confidence. And I feel like second half, Trossard, Arsenal are going to start pushing on a bit more. But yeah, it's, 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 gone, it's gone to plan, I believe, right now. I really do. So we're in added time. We've had two minutes of added time already at the end of the first half. Pepe Aquino is coming off the field. So Porto will play the remainder of this first half with 10 men. Well, uh, and then in, in the, there's a challenge on Havertz. There were two Porto players. He was sandwiched there from either side. He's gone down holding his back. Now the Arsenal players have gone to referee Turpin, who just calmly says, it's a free kick. And uh, and I think Havertz, I'm not sure he's going to to, uh, to get up very quickly here, so he might yeah. need some treatment. And he just gets a knee in the hip or the lower ribs. Like you say, he's, a, he's sandwiched between two Porto players, trying to compete for the ball, but one of them, I think it was Varela, would, had jumped in the air and his knee just caught him right in the hip. Bit of a sore one. He's getting up, and uh, Arsenal will have this free kick. Half-time almost here. More Champions League commentary tomorrow night, by the way. Atletico Madrid against Inter. Last season's runners-up. That'll come to you live from inside the Metropolitano. Ian Dennis and Paul Robinson have arrived in Madrid, and they will bring you that commentary this time tomorrow night. As Raya takes this free kick downfield, the whistle goes... And there's quite a reaction there from the Arsenal fans who felt that they were short-changed in terms of how much time was added on at the end of the first period. The most significant fact, though, is that Arsenal scored the goal in the 41st minute through Leandro Trossard. They are winning 1-0 and the tie is level at 1-1. Theo Walcott and Matt Upson. Do you know what? Like I say, I feel like this is going to plan. Yes, the fans may seem frustrated. I think they're more frustrated with the referee for decisions and, and cards, etc. But like I say, I like the fact he's allowing it to flow. And I think Arsenal have got to be pretty happy with the, with the way they've sort of finished this half. Yeah, they've taken advantage of a moment, a lapse in concentration. And they've been few and far between from Porto in this first half. They've set up brilliantly. They've got a very clear game plan. They're a stubborn team to play against. And credit... They've opened them up, had the one moment, and they've got the quality 
and the technical ability of Trossard in the right place at the right time to make it count and they're back in this game it's a tough tough Champions League tie this Arsenal have found themselves in and at half time here in the second leg it is Arsenal 1 Porto 0 that means it's 1-1 on aggregate and Kelly Cates is here with us in the stadium John, thank you very much. John Murray, a commentator here at the Emirates this evening. I tell you what, Theo, the half-time whistle could not come at a better time for, for Arsenal. They've got the goal that, that they need to draw this level and tempers and frustration were just starting to build in the latter stages of that first half. I think it's come at a good time for Porto as well. I really do believe that. I feel like they've started to switch off, like the goal says it all. Um, you know, you have players that weren't focused in their, in their role and that allowed Trossard to, to get in there and to obviously make that finish. Yes, I feel like Mikel, he'd be very happy. Uh, I mean, going into this now half level, I think he's got to be very proud of what they've done because, like we said before, Matt was saying, that Porto have been so stubborn, they've been so regiment of what they wanted to do today, and they've done it brilliantly well up until that point. But, yeah, I think it's come at a very good time where we can just regroup, get the messages across, because it's going to be a completely different second half. I'm pretty sure of that right now. Yeah, what are you expecting from the second half, Matt? Are you expecting to see more of a familiar performance from Arsenal? Yeah, I mean, it's more about Porto, Kelly, to be honest, and how they're making the game. They're the ones that are trying to impose their style on it even more, I feel. And they've, they've probably done that to a degree. Arsenal haven't maybe been their usual high-tempo self. The, the speed of the passing hasn't quite been there. That one-touch interchange, they haven't moved the ball quickly, but I think that's because of Porto. I think they might have edged it in terms of having their authority on the game. OK, they're 1-0 down, but I think it's all about Porto. How do they approach it? Do they just still want to say, do they just want to grind this game out or do they want to be a little bit more adventurous? I think it's going to be the first one. I think they're just going to try and grind it, maybe nick something at the end or force it, you know, into a stage where it just becomes attritional and, and they get the win somehow. Yeah, the game plan doesn't seem very much to be on the front foot for Porto at all, Theo. <laughs> there hasn't been many clear-cut chances, both teams, to be honest. But, yeah, Porto, I feel, and as, as a, as a you know, player that's been in a situation before, they're going to want to take it to all the way, to penalties, I'm pretty yeah. sure that way. Um, and that's the sort of way I feel like they can get through this tie, is, again, frustrating this crowd because you can sense that. But the, like I say, Mikel will be calm and make sure that his team is calm. And they understand that if he's been implementing that into his team now, that they want to take it all the way to penalties. We know this. They probably wanted that from, from the when they drew Arsenal in, in this tie anyway. So we know what to expect from Porto in the second half. And it's going to be very frustrating to, uh, to see it happen. Could be a frustrating second half for Arsenal, but they've already made the breakthrough in this first half. They lead 1-0 on the night. It's one all on aggregate between Arsenal and Porto in the second leg of their last 16 tie. Three goals for Conor McNamara watching Barcelona and Napoli. Conor. Yes, Kelly, this is why we love the knockout stages of the Champions League so much, isn't it? An absolutely cracking tie. Barcelona 2, Napoli 1 on the night. It is 3-2 on aggregate for now. Barcelona dominated the opening stages. 20-year-old Fermin Lopez scored the opening goal after 15 minutes. He was set up by the former Leeds player Rafinha. And then Jao Cancelo, on loan from Manchester City, got the second. Again, Rafinha was at the heart of it, jinking into position, hitting a shot that came back off the post, and it bounced up into the path of Jao Cancelo to stroke at home. At that stage of the game, Barcelona were cruising. Yamal had sent his stage, but Napoli kept their heads up. And Matteo Politano broke free, pulled it back for the defender, Amir Ramari, who swept home with a flourish. And from that point on, Napoli have been the team on top in terms of territory, in terms of possession, in terms of chances. Barcelona, grateful to hear that halftime whistle, being one goal ahead. Barcelona 2, Napoli 1 on the night and 3-2 to the Catalans on aggregate for now. Connor, thank you very much. Connor McNamara is across everything that is happening in Barcelona this evening. Watching events at Bolton, it's half time for Adam Cotia. And Bolton lead Oxford by two goals to nil. Bolton at the moment missing four important forward players through injury. They've showed lots of intent here and both their wing backs have scored their goals. First, a, a powerful angled shot left footed by Nathaniel Ogbetta, who's on low from Swansea. And then Josh Dacris Cogley scoring, prodding in after a mistake by Greg Lee and Jamie Cumming, the Oxford goalkeeper. It's Dacris Cogley's 28th birthday and it really was a gift. Bolton 2, Oxford 0. Adam, thank you very much. In the Championship, they're into the second half between Birmingham and Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough lead there by a goal to nil. In League One, Barnsley have just taken the lead against Carlisle. It's Carlisle 1, Barnsley 2. 
Derby nil, Reading nil, Fleetwood nil, Bristol Rovers nil, Leighton Orient nil, Port Vale nil. Lincoln have just gone three nil up at home to Cambridge. Northampton nil, Blackpool nil, Portsmouth lead Burton by a goal to nil. Shrewsbury down to ten men and they trail Exeter by three goals to nil. Uh, just waiting for the latest scores to load here. Wickham won, Wigan nil. Bolton 2, Oxford United nil, as we've heard. In League 2, uh, it's Wimbledon 1, 10-man Gillingham nil, Bradford nil, Forest Green 1, Crawley nil, Notts County 1, Crewe nil, Sutton nil, Grimsby 1, MK Dons nil, Newport 2. Uh, Newport are leading there by two goals to nil against more two goals to one. There's a goal just gone in there. Newport two, Morecambe one is the latest score. Swindon one, Accrington nil. Tranmere one, Mansfield one. Walsall one, Barrow nil. Wrexham nil. Harrogate nil. And in the Scottish Championship, it's Partick Thistle nil. Wraith Rovers one. We'll bring you up to date with everything very shortly. We'll be reacting to this half-time uh, between Arsenal and Porto here at the Emirates. And, of course, we'll bring you second-half commentary. Plus, we'll keep up to date with the rest of the day's sports headlines after the BBC News with Nick Hatfield. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Downing Street has described comments allegedly made by a Conservative donor about the MP Diane Abbott as racist and wrong. The Guardian reported that Frank Hester made the remarks in a private meeting in 2019. He has apologised but says his comments had nothing to do with gender or skin colour. Our political correspondent Hannah Miller has more on the update from Number 10. They released a statement saying the comments allegedly made by Frank Hester were racist and wrong. He has now rightly apologised for the offence caused and where remorse is shown, it should be accepted. The Prime Minister is clear there is no place for racism in public life and as the first British Asian Prime Minister leading one of the most ethnically diverse cabinets in our history, the UK is living proof of that fact. NHS England has confirmed that puberty-blocking drugs will no longer be routinely prescribed to children at gender identity clinics. The government described this as a landmark decision. Dr David Bell used to work as a governor at the Tavistock and Portland Gender Clinic, which is due to close this month. He's previously raised concerns about the treatments being given to children. It's not just that they were being given puberty blockers. It's that children and young people who presented with multiple problems, that is, depression, histories of trauma, profound family disturbances. All these problems were presenting as a problem of gender. A Romanian court has ruled the social media influencers Andrew and Tristan Tate can be extradited to the UK, but only after the conclusion of their trial in Romania. Bedfordshire police obtained the arrest warrants as part of an investigation into allegations of rape and human trafficking. The brothers deny all the allegations against them. And 200 tonnes of food is on its way to Gaza from Cyprus in the first humanitarian aid through a shipping corridor. The United Nations says the territory is on the brink of famine. Red Nose Day is back. Three, two, one, go! Grab your popcorn and fizzy rosé for The Traitors, <gasps> the movie. Yes! Regional radio legend Alan Partridge is back for a special comic relief broadcast. It's that time. And it may be Seleni's last year hosting, but don't worry, the fine folks at W1A will be finding his replacement. It's a big job, a huge challenge. Get ready for comic relief, funny for money. Friday at 7 on BBC iPlayer. This is Five Live Sports with Kelly Cates on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. We're live from the Emirates this evening for this Champions League last 16 second leg tie between Arsenal and Porto. Arsenal are 1-0 up on the night at half-time. One all on aggregate with a big 45 minutes coming up for both sides. Elsewhere, the last 16 action at Indian Wells is underway in California. Carlos Alcaraz, is the highest ranked player in the men's draw, is on court and Russell Fuller is there. Russell. Kelly, his opponent is Fabian Marashan, who will bring back some uncomfortable memories for the Spaniard, as it was the Hungarian, then outside the world's top 100, who beat him on the clay in Rome last year. But tonight, in bright sunshine in the Californian desert, even though it was nip and tuck for the first half a dozen games, Alcaraz got the first break and then immediately the second, and he's won the first set by six games to three. And as for the doubles, Lloyd Glasspool is the last British representative, and he has a quarter-final later alongside his Dutch partner, Jean-Julien Rocher. 
Thank you very much for that, Russell. He'll bring us up to date with everything that's happening at Indian Wells. Tuesday is the start of the PGA Tour's flagship event, the Players' Championship. We'll have commentary of the third and fourth rounds on Five Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. And our golf correspondent, Ian Carter, is in Florida for what's always a big event, this one, Ian. But is it an important one, particularly this year in the golf calendar? Yes, I think it is, and obviously the build-up uh, has been continuing today, obviously getting underway on Thursday, and an eagerly anticipated news conference with Jay Monaghan. He limits his interactions with the media uh, to very few occasions, but always a set-piece press conference in the week of the Players' Championship. Eagerly anticipated because we just don't know what the future holds for men's professional golf, and of course this ongoing deal potentially with Saudi Arabia was the thing that most people wanted answers on. Very few of those answers were were revealed by Jay Monaghan. He did say that negotiations are accelerating. He said there are still several key issues to be resolved. There is a shared vision between the two parties, but it is going to take time. He does anticipate a positive outcome, but it remains hugely controversial. We heard from Xander Schauffele, the Olympic champion, who said that the commissioner still has a long way to go in terms of the trust of the PGA Tours membership and actually Monaghan admitted that the process of the initial announcement of a potential deal with Saudi Arabia back in June well that's been the biggest regret of the whole episode for him when you look back to last summer I could have handled that better and I've taken full responsibility and accountability for that that's on me but we've moved on and we've made so much progress since that point in time and I have learned from it uh, I've been humbled by it. I think I've gotten stronger as a leader. Um, and the progress that we've made since that point in time, uh, I couldn't be more excited about. Uh, that was Jay Monaghan. But Ian, as is often the case at the moment, the question about the golf comes second. But who are we looking out for? Obviously, Scotty Scheffler's the defending champion. Yes, and we have to look at Scotty Scheffler, given the way that he won at Bay Hill on Sunday, a five-shot victory, finally finding a magic touch on the greens. And we've all been saying that if he could just find that touch on the greens, he'd be virtually unstoppable. That was certainly the case last week. He's the defending champion this week. No one has ever successfully defended the Players' Championship title, but he undoubtedly is the man to beat this week. Rory McIlroy still struggling for form at the moment. Several other potential contenders but as you say it's Scotty Scheffler who everyone is talking about now given that commanding performance in his victory at the Arnold Palmer Invitational on Sunday. Ian thank you very much and commentary of the third and fourth rounds of the players is on five sports extra and BBC sounds there have been two goals at Derby Tom Gale two goals in barely two minutes Kelly it's Derby one Reading one the equalizer coming from the visitors but Paul Hornside took the lead free kick from the right swung in Dwight Gale brought it down on the penalty spot and then on the half volley found the roof at the net and then moments later at the opposite end Reading's first attempt on goal striker Sam Smith finding the bottom corner with his header we played 10 minutes in the second half it is Derby one Reading one Thank you very much for that busy night in Leagues 1 and 2. We'll keep you up to date with all the action there. And, of course, we're at the game in the Championship this evening uh, where it's Birmingham against Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough leading in that one. Jimmy Anderson says his place in England side this summer is not a given. He's been speaking to the Tail Enders podcast, having become the first pace bowler to take 700 test wickets during England's serious defeat in India. You can hear the full interview with Jimmy Anderson on BBC Sounds. We're live from the Emirates this evening, where Arsenal lead Porto by a goal to nil after the first half of the Champions League last 16 second leg tie. It means it's one all on aggregate. It is all to play for in, the in, the, in this 45 minutes. But the first 45 minutes had a lot of frustration for Arsenal. John Murray is part of our commentary team. Theo Walcott and Matthew Upson are here as well. Theo, you and Matt were saying at the end of the first half that this second half could be dictated by how Porto are going to come out. With Arsenal having got the goal, there might, you would imagine, be some kind of impetus from Porto to try and get a winner in this. But you think they might be going all the way to penalties if Porto get their way. 
I do, Kelly. I, I can't see Porto changing their style. I really can't. They're very stubborn. Um, they're a team that frustrates. Like we've been, that's been a constant message we've been saying tonight. And I felt like Arsenal come out of there very too early. I thought I, I thought Porto were going to delay themselves even more so to the point where the referee would have to knock on their change room door to get them out. But they've come out. Arsenal feel like they need to enjoy themselves. They start to enjoy themselves in snippets during that first half. I want to see a little bit more from, I felt Saka start off the game fantastically well. I, I'd like to see Declan Rice to get hold of that ball a bit more, control that midfield. But yeah, again, it, it doesn't really matter how you play in this, in this competition as long as you get the, the result. Will Arsenal get the result? We'll find out with our commentary team, Mathia Walcott, Matt Upson and John Murray. Arsenal about to get the second half underway, just waiting for the whistle from Clement Turpin. No substitutes at half-time. There's the whistle. Off we go. Odegaard playing it back to goalkeeper Raya, who hits it long up towards the edge of the penalty area. It bounces all the way over the top of Bukayo Saka and Porto clear it out of play via a deflection for a throw-in for the visitors. So uh, the team's... As they started the match, Raya in goal for Arsenal, White, Saliba, Gabriel and Kivio the back four, Odegaard, Jorginho and Rice, Saka, Havertz and Trossard. And the, the Porto team, they've got it at the moment with uh, Gonzalez over there on the left-hand side. It's played up the left wing to Galeno. Then it comes in field to Evan Nielsen who stabs it back down the left for Galeno who pulls over to the bar of the near post. Evan Nielsen turns, twists, defender Gabriel is there with him, he's still kept it in play, gives it back out to Galeno on the left-hand side, this is in front of all of the Porto fans in that corner of the Emirates Stadium, still many, many Arsenal fans coming back to their seats here, Galeno, right-footed ball into the near post, is cleared away by Saka, but that's actually only given it back to Porto, Varela, and then back they go to the halfway line, so Porto with Costa in goal, he's got the ball now, João Mario, Captain Pepe, Otavio and Wendell, Gonzalez, Varela and Pepe Aquino in the midfield. Conceição on the right, Galeno on the left, the man who scored the, the Porto goal in, uh, in the Dragao in the first leg. And then top scorer Evan Nielsen, the number 30 through the middle. And it is Porto in the famous blue and white striped shirts, blue shorts and blue socks who play the ball back to their goalkeeper, Diogo Costa, who uh, just rolls his foot over the ball and, and passes it to, to Pepe halfway inside his own half so Matt what are you thinking I think it's interesting that you know I look at the possession stats it isn't heavily weighted towards Arsenal I think that's credit to Porto of how they've played how they've stopped Arsenal getting all the little passes off and getting into their rhythm they've started this second half really brightly we're talking about how defensive they might be but they've got players in the wide areas Galeno and Conceição who can sucker punch you absolutely 100% have the quality and I thought it was interesting that Declan Rice had probably had a good one-minute chat with the referee as they were waiting to kick off. I think he was making his point about what's going on in the midfield there, and there's a lot of different kind of contact and spoiler tactics going on that maybe think, he was trying to make the referee aware of. Do you think that will have hit the target? Possibly. You never know. <laughs> the old... Perhaps it has. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So, uh, Porto in the centre circle with Conceição now on the right hand side and here he is the the fourth son of the coach takes it on Conceição into the penalty area gets the ball across it's very congested and then a rather laboured overhead kick by Evan Nielsen is high over the top of the crossbar and behind Krigolka but again Porto have started off this game very well right now again uh, I mean Evan Nielsen is still on the floor in the penalty area for making that acrobatic sort of straight in the crowd right now yeah he stayed on the ground after crashing down onto the pitch following his overhead kick and they're going to bring on the medical people to have a look at it. you know what? I've done that right yeah. before without a crash mat and it I've hurts lost, it? I've actually just seen the replay <laughs> and you know we, we, we might criticise him but he's actually rattled his head off the turf when he landed I mean it wasn't the, the most graceful technique. of uh, overhead kicks you've ever seen was it and it was a bit cumbersome the way he landed and he did actually hit his head straight onto the turf and anyone who's ever done that like the, the fud that you get when you crash your head onto the floor it can be a little bit nasty and I think it just shook himself up a little bit there John uh, so while he is dealt with let's go to Derby interesting developments Tom Gale 
Derby won, Reading won, John, but moments after equalising, Reading down to 10. Captain Andy Yeardham sent off for a second yellow. Persistent fouling, we played 62 minutes. Derby won, Reading won. Uh, also, Walsall won, Barrow won, Newport 3, Morecambe 1. Tranmere now lead Mansfield, the leaders, by two goals to one in League 2. It's Swindon 1, Accrington 1, Northampton 0, Blackpool 1. And... Uh, Remember, this is a Five Live final score night tonight, so the Vida Printer is in action. Uh, listen to our commentary alongside the Vida Printer and the graphics via the red button, the BBC iPlayer and the BBC Sports app. You just click on Five Live final score. Champions League tonight, Arsenal 1, Porto 0. Goal kick to, to Porto, but Pepe is just going to tap short and uh, Evan Nielsen has come back onto the field. But I think... It is the case that that would be a sore one, but thousands of Arsenal fans aren't buying it. Here is Trossard, the Arsenal goal scorer, the goal scorer tonight. Really well finished in the 41st minute, set up by Odegaard. But it is very finely balanced this tie, and now he has Conce Sao again on the right-hand side, running at Kivio, he got a touch on that. The ball bounces away, and Kivio is going to allow it to run over the dead ball line. Conce Sao optimistically appealed for a a corner I don't think even he thought he was going to win that appeal 1-0 Arsenal need 1-1 on the night back to Portsmouth Chris Wise Tunnel up against Burton second of the night for their Aussie striker Kaseni Yangi couldn't miss from a yard out after great work by Abu Kamara it's Portsmouth 2 Burton 0 Araya a long clearance from him Otavio dives forward might bounce back for Arsenal but in fact it lands at the feet of Pepe on the edge of the penalty area, back to the goalkeeper, Diogo Costa, just rolls it out with his right foot, on Otavio, long pass, that's glanced headed on by Galeno, but Evan Nielsen is beaten by Saliba, who passes it back to goalkeeper Ryan. Yeah, the ball really slipping off the turf at the moment, it's a bit of a bar of soap, the ball is like a real kind of light drizzle, isn't there, very fine rain just falling out of the sky, and it's a very slick pitch and ball at the moment out there yeah I was going to ask you but it is isn't it it is drizzling now you can uh, you can see it in the air so that adds it's to the feeling here tonight it's got a misjudgment or a little yeah. misread of the ball all over it this game hasn't it just yeah yeah I don't think there's anything that we've seen in these over the two matches of this tie as Pepe <laughs> throws himself to the ground ball rolls out of play referee's not buying it Rice takes the throw for Odegaard and Otavio has to come and put it out of play comical <laughs> I think even Pepe started laughing didn't he <laughs> oh, threw himself so. down didn't get the foul and I think he had to have a little chuckle to himself it was ridiculous yeah uh, but he's back in position now Pepe and uh, Arsenal have the ball near the corner flag on the left hand side it's cleared away towards the halfway line uh, Pepe who uh, has extended his record again tonight the oldest player to uh, play the oldest outfield player to play in the Champions League every time he takes to the field he extends that record as uh, Arsenal send it forward but it is all the way through for a goal kick so Arsenal 1 Porto 0 uh, Wimbledon 2 Gillingham 0 is the latest score in League 2 and uh, Otavio has the ball at the back so they uh, clear towards the, the halfway line where João Mario turns and rolls it over the halfway line to Conceição just in front of where his dad is standing there he's got rid of his coat even though the rain is coming down in North London Sergio Conceição he's got his jumper tucked into his trousers I think it's like a tracksuit isn't it, it is. the Otavio then <laughs> left footed ball over the top which will bounce all the way through to Raya I'm not saying anything at the moment that's suggesting to me that this could be quite a long night absolutely I mean I, I had those thoughts driving here mm. I thought I, I just pictured it I thought to myself this this could go the full distance this game for sure Saka has it on the right hand side Arsenal who went out of Europe last season remember to Portuguese opposition in the Europa League and then uh, Porto win it back Jorginho feels he was fouled but then an important challenge actually from Havertz to get a touch on that to send it to uh, to Kibio and then Trossard goes down under the challenge of, of Conce Sao and the, the locals here the Arsenal fans all on their feet in front of us howling with derision it's a free kick to Arsenal yeah it's not it's not necessarily the, the force of the challenge but 
it's just untidy and niggly, isn't it? You know, to, to, to take him out from behind there, Theo, you, 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 you're skirting with a yellow card, aren't you? And we're talking about the, the surface right now, and this, like you were saying, players are going to misjudge things, they're going to, you know, they might be slipping, and it's one of those things, it's just free kick, you move on, simple that, as that, but obviously the Arsenal fans want a bit more. That, that wasn't a misjudgment, though, was it? Maybe not, He no. just, just booted, booted through the back of him, didn't he? I think he did, to be honest. Yeah. I think he knew exactly yeah. what he was doing. Yeah. Theo Walcott and Matt Upson with us here inside the Emirates tonight as Arsenal attack. And the ball is uh, played in, left-footed by White to the back post. That's headed away by João Mario and cleared away into the centre circle where Saliba is able to take it down and then pass it forward. But that's straight into the path of Wendell, who is going to run forward with it from left-back. Well, then excellent work from Odegaard and it bounces off Galeno and the referee says that Wendell was fouling Odegaard. So it's a free kick. To Arsenal inside their own half. Excellent play from the captain there, setting the tone. Yeah, not, not the first time he's been top draw out of possession. I mean, he's really pressed well. He, he does it with such a purpose and he trapped back there with real energy, won the ball back and then Wendell just had to pull him back, which is where the foul came from. And it's that belief as well. He always believes he's going to win it. And yeah, that's like you said, it sets the tone, the whole environment. Ball is with the Porto goalkeeper, Diogo Costa. You don't associate him with that, though, do you, Martin Odegaard? Oh, he, no. it, it, it's just a... Is that something that he's picked up here? Because when he first came here, he didn't have that about him, did he? And as well, like we were saying before... That's a, that's a poor clearance from uh, Costa, which hit Havertz. And Porto is struggling to get away with this, and it'll bounce out of place so you can finish your sentence there. Goodness me. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's what we like I would expect from Ogre I don't see him as the person that's going to be dictating by his voice to be honest it's what he does in the field right yeah Arsenal take this throw on the left hand side here is Trossard it's very tight in there two three Porto players around him and uh, Trossard as well he's able to make sure he gets the contact that he wanted and it bounces out for a corner first corner of the second half so Declan Rice since the trip to Dubai Declan Rice has been very much set piece and corner taker not all of them but uh, he's been very effective with his delivery and Declan Rice a European trophy winning captain last season with West Ham Rice waits to take this just standing two or three yards off the pitch and then in comes the delivery the near post which actually was over the head of Galeno I think it was at the near post but was cleared away by the defender behind him Odegaard passes it back to Rice Rice onto his right foot, then a curling ball into the back post. That's headed away by Pepe, who did well, came across, set himself well. Arsenal attacking again. They've got some pressure here now, and now it's Saka on the right-hand side, slipping the ball through to Havertz, inside the penalty area to the byline, shot from Rice. That's blocked by Pepe on the edge of the six-yard box, and it bounces away out of play for... Uh, a throw in to Arsenal again we're going to go to Derby again in a moment but Arsenal take this throw quickly bounces out of play so let's go there now Derby, Reading, Tom Gale Derby 2, Reading 1 John the host back in front from the penalty spot Reading keeper Pereira collided with Gale wide left of the box Howrahan dispatched the spot kick inside the final 20 minutes of normal time Derby 2, Reading 1 also Newport 3, Morecambe 2 in League 2 and Arsenal have forced another corner again from the left again it's Declan Rice who's standing down there in that corner of the Emirates Stadium in front of the North Bank stand the referee Clement Turpin is, uh, is just having a word with one or two of the players who are gathered many of them beyond the, the far side of the six yard box so Rice left arm raised in goes the delivery underneath the crossbar it's punched away by the goalkeeper from almost right on the goal line and then cleared further away on the edge of the box by Evan Nielsen out of play for another Arsenal throw Arsenal are pinning them back in I mean we've, we've seen the importance of set plays in the Premier League this season I mean it could define who wins the Premier League I mean it's just been such a crucial part of football this year and we're seeing it in this game I mean this is going to boil down to I feel how well Porto are drilled and organised to deal with these set plays. The, the delivery from Declan Rice is absolutely on the money, Theo. Oh, and as well, they're not letting them have time to breathe. 
throw in into the penalty area that Odegaard tries to work across. Yeah, I mean, Arsenal line. are taking throw-ins quickly. We, we can't yeah. even get a word in. Like, that's yeah. how quickly they're taking it. Corners. And as well, I'm seeing Mikel, which I said at the start of the game, the passion. He's getting everyone up for this right now. You can just see it on the sideline just previously before that corner. He just got everyone up. And that's what it's going to come down to, having that support background. And they're showing it. Arsenal aren't giving them a breath right now. Ben White getting it back on the right-hand side. White socks right up under, over his knees and wins another throw-in off Wendell. So 10 yards back from the corner flag. Ben White again waits there. The uh, England qualified right back in the team at the top of the Premier League table. Gareth Southgate names his squad on Thursday. We'll have news of that Thursday afternoon as White waits to take this still waits and then in it goes towards the little figure of Jorginho who gets it back turns on that far side it's very tight in there two Porto players with him in comes the challenge to put it out of play for a throw in and, and Porto in this period of the game almost 15 minutes played in the second half they can't get out of their defensive third that's how much the Arsenal pressure is uh, is telling so another throw in White waits to take. It is very congested in there. Havertz comes. Jorginho flicks it into the box. Saka, oh, an offside flag against Bukayo Saka. And it is a free kick to uh, to Porto. Back to Bolton. Adam Cotia. Bolton are 3-0 up against Oxford now. George Thomason's left foot shot from outside the box. It got a deflection and a loop past the goalkeeper. It may well have come off Aaron Collins, the Bolton striker. But for the moment, it's Thomason's goal. And it's Bolton 3, Oxford 0. And in League 2, it is Newport 3, Morecambe 3. What about the other match tonight? Barcelona and Napoli. What's happening there, Conor McNamara? We've reached the reached the hour mark. Barcelona two, Napoli one on the night. Three two, an aggregate for Barcelona for now. But this young team are beginning to make mistakes. They are allowing Napoli opportunities. Both teams have had chances in recent minutes. Rafinha a close range shot straight at Mere. At the other end, Palatano denied by Ter Stegen. A good reaction save. 2-1 for now. 3-2 to Barcelona and aggregate. Arsenal winning a free kick halfway inside their own half. And um, Jorginho was trying to take the ball away to the halfway line, just yes. stopped his progress. It's basically. another foul, John. It's another foul. For me, a tactical foul. Evan Nielsen not going to win the ball. Knows he can just trip through the back of Jorginho. It's not in a dangerous area of the pitch. He's not going to pick up a yellow card, but it breaks up the play, breaks up the rhythm. And Porto at the moment, that's their, their, their main hope of staying in this game because they're, they're under a lot of pressure. Yeah. Champions League record 36 fouls in the first leg. Yeah, as uh, Porto come forward, nice work from Pepe Aquino, and then uh, here's Evan Nielsen who plays the ball back into his own half to Pepe. How many of those fouls were Pepe? Do we know? <laughs> I'm not sure we delved that deeply into it. Right, okay. I and, thought you'd have that, that to hand job. Well, I'm surprised it wasn't discussed late in the <laughs> evening in Porto <laughs> after the first leg. Here is. Uh, Diogo Costa passing the ball out. Oh, that's rather bounced off João Mario, who was then a little fortunate. Havertz stepped in on him and conceded the free kick. Pepe takes a quick free kick. And now the ball is being brought forward by Pepe Aquino, who angles the pass to Evan Nielsen, who threw himself down after colliding with Kivio. Uh, has that been given? Has I think he's given a free kick. He's yeah, given us a free kick. I was going to say, Debatable. I, I, I didn't think Kivio actually stepped in and tackled properly. He's got to step in it and was, tackle. It was yeah. the right decision. He doesn't really believe he's going to win that ball and he kind of half goes for it, but he, he does step in to Evan Nielsen. He does make the foul there on, on the edge of the penalty box. And not just that, it started off where we expected Porto to slow it down. They took the free kick very quickly as well. Yeah. And I've noticed Jorginho did struggle to keep up with the play and it might be something yeah. that Mikel might well, want to look at. Shortly. They have got a change of gear, haven't they? Let's face it, you know, Conce Sao is really quick over five yards, so is Pe Pepe Aquino. They're, they're bright, sharp players, so when they want to have that moment to switch that gear, they've got it in the locker and they've won themselves a free kick in a very dangerous area on the edge of the 18-yard box. They have Concisau standing to the right of the ball and uh, it could be a delivery left-footed from him or it could uh, it could be curled towards the, the back post as well. That is a, an option. In fact, it's João Mario stops and up case Concisau he goes for goal but the Arsenal fans will tell you that he got right underneath that and he sent it arrowing away high over the top corner as uh, Arsenal went for a quick goal kick downfield cleared to Odegaard Odegaard lifted back over the top this is Saka now racing forward on the right wing he's up against Otavio plays it into Odegaard on the edge of the box now back to Saka but it bounced off him 
as it came in there and Porto cleared towards the halfway line. Still the score, 1-0 to Arsenal on the night, which means the tie is all square. Stays like this and it would be extra time and it's probably worth reminding listeners that uh, there is now no away goals rule, so you don't need to worry about that. If it's all square on aggregate at the 90 minutes, then we will go into extra time. Uh, as uh, Arsenal played in from the right-hand side and it bounces back to uh, Saliba and then Arsenal with Ben White will take up possession inside their own half Jorginho under pressure he has to play it back and he's actually given it to, to Conceição and Conceição is then challenged might have been fouled by Odegaard oh. oh the ball almost ran through to Evan Nielsen it was just intercepted by Gabriel I mean that was tight it was a really sharp counter and the referee <coughs> could have given a foul he waved play on but the passing behind wasn't quite heavy enough for Evan Nielsen it was cut out by Saliba now Arsenal attacking down the left hand side Trossard his ball across the edge of the penalty area is volleyed away by Gonzalez. Arsenal still with it though. And Ben White allows it to, to run and keeps possession for Arsenal. Gives it to Jorginho. Uh, at the meeting today, by the way, the UEFA meeting, Matt, if you can stand is, any is, more of is, that. Is now the time for that, John? <laughs> well, I was just going to say, the question was asked whether there is any thought to bringing back the away goals rule. And the answer was that it was scrapped because that was the, the uh, view of the vast majority of coaches. So I think you can take it from that. It won't be coming And back. players. I used to hate that. Yeah, I, used to, I used to yeah. love it as a, you. as a commentator. Goodness me. Yeah, but it's all about the players, of course. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Here's Jorginho inside the penalty area. Plays it back to, to Gabriel. Now to the right-hand side where Saliba passes it down the line to White Saka. Saka in the full-back position, there are blue and white shirts all around him and then Saka wins it back illegally, that's not going to go down well, it's a free kick to Porto and they won't be in a hurry of course So, uh, and, and that's the bit there where I feel, yes yeah, Saka for me, I'm a big fan but where he feels that physical presence of Wendell, that's the experience when he, he can afford to go down there, he's had a lot of physical sort of presence tonight of a lot of players and Yes, he uses his attributes to his, his strengths, which is obviously using his, his strength, his lower body uh, weight. And uh, I just feel at times Saka can afford to go down to get the free kicks in a very sort of vulnerable position for Porter. Yeah. He's so strong, isn't he? When, when he gets planted, he's got that low centre of gravity, Saka. He, he tends to hold off or bounce off nearly anyone, to be honest. But I agree with you. There's sometimes where that contact comes and he can just go over, but... Credit learn a little bit from Pepe, couldn't we? Credit to him, really. Well, I don't know if he wants to learn from that dive a moment ago. <laughs> it wasn't the best, was it? So 1-0 to Arsenal. It remains on the night. Back to Bolton. Adam Cotia. Where Bolton lead Oxford by four goals to nil. Now Aaron Collins on the stretch, prodding in after a low cross on the left. 4-0. Pepe shields oh. the ball on the edge of the area. It bounces to the edge of the box. Where it's turned in by Odegaard. Pepe and his goalkeeper, Costa. There. Odegaard runs away into the corner. Is he given a foul? But I think the referee has ruled it out. He has. He's ruled it out. I think the suggestion is was was that a push on Pepe? Wow. I think that's what the suggestion is. It was one of those where the ball was running through. It was Havertz who was going through with Pepe, and Pepe was trying to wait for the goalkeeper. And Pepe has gone down very oh. easily. He's trying to get his body in between him and Havertz. Havertz has a tiny little bit of his shirt. And you're right, Pepe really does play into it. He pulls himself down. I mean, it's not a lot of contact. He gets Pepe out of jail, really, because he hadn't dealt with it well enough. There was a bit of confusion. I felt the referee had given the goal, and he's walking over to the technical area now, John. Yeah, he's got the yellow card out. Someone has uh, said something out of turn. The yellow card, I think he's pointing to Mikel Arteta, who points to himself and says, what, me? Uh, and now, I think that's Albert Steibenberg, isn't it, coming forward from the bench, he's one of his coaches. I mean, he's, he's having a word with Pepe as well. Is he, is he younger than Pepe? He might well be. They are I both think they're 41. They're both 41, but yeah. he might... Well, Pepe's just turned 41. OK. I but think the Arsenal staff are asking about the VAR. That's what the issue is. I feel that's when Mikel's got the but, book in there because he signalled the VAR. Yeah, but, but the trouble is with VAR is because there was that shirt pulled. Yeah. It's not a glaring oh. error, is it? You know, they're not going to overrule that decision. But the referee, for me, I mean, how long did he take, John, to make that decision? I felt there was a little bit of influence, maybe, from Porto players. 
he didn't seem quite sure which way he was going to go and he took a good three, four, five seconds to make his mind up. It was kind of written in the stars, I think, wasn't it, that Pepe would be at the middle of yeah. something tonight Absolutely. and now it's happened. Absolutely. So, goal ruled out. It remains Arsenal 1, Porto 0. So 1-1 one, one on aggregate. It is still Barcelona 2, Napoli 1 in the other match tonight. So that is 3-2 to Barcelona on aggregate. Uh, also Newport 4, Morecambe 3, Carlisle 1, Barnsley 3, Lincoln 4, Cambridge 0. And uh, Arsenal with Odegaard. Moments ago he thought he'd scored the goal that put Arsenal in front. Saka then tries to pass it forward to White, but that's cut out inside the penalty area. And now Porto will look to bring it away and pass it forward, Trouble. which they do. Here's Conceição, it's three against three. And Conceição all the way through the middle of the edge of the area. Left foot shot, Raya goes down, makes the oh. save. Excellent defending by Kivio. He held off over Nielsen and he had to and he was able to scrape it away. In fact, the final touch is off Evan Nielsen, but yeah. wide and behind for a goal kick. I mean, just shows you how quickly they got that one pass through into the middle. There's an ocean of space. Arsenal were fully committed, and I thought Galeno was out on the left-hand side. If he slips it wide at the right time, Conceição, I felt he was in for a better effort on goal. He shoots from the middle. It's a good save from Raya, but for me, that ball has to go out wide to, to, to Galeno. He's in a far better position to score. 20 minutes to play could be extra time it will be extra time when this scoreline with this scoreline of Arsenal 1 Porto 0 but it's fractious it just has a feel that something is going to happen if you're on that wide side there Theo and he doesn't pass you the ball you're going to you're going to go nuts aren't you surely you know what? I, that happened a lot to me and I always understand why a forward would shoot because you, you feel like the centre half are backing off backing off and backing off yeah. which then allows the space for that wide to then do the cut straight back to the player but once he lures that centre forward to, the centre back towards him and the space is there just pop it out to that side and you're coming in from that outside onto your right foot for that little finish into the far post it's just a it's a classic finish isn't it and as well it's a classic training drill yeah. type counter attack when you're 3v3 yeah. trying to find a spare man and yeah he picked the wrong option I, in the end I, but I, I felt they got away with that there Arsenal they did and, uh, and then a free kick goes Porto's way for a high foot so while they uh, Porto organise themselves to Portsmouth Chris Wise the 20th place Burton Portsmouth 2 Burton 1 John Brayford the captain with a low drive through a crowded penalty area so jeopardy perhaps in the final six minutes for the league leaders Pompey 2 Burton 1 and Bolton are now 5-0 up on Oxford uh, still Birmingham 0 Middlesbrough 1 last we heard in the championship the one match being played in the championship tonight you look at Martin Odegaard there, John. I mean, he, that's the fastest I've seen. He was sprinting to put pressure on Costa in goal to force him to make a mistake with the ball and Arsenal win it back. It's just brilliant pressure from Martin Odegaard. Ball on the halfway line with Evan Nielsen, who heads it on. And it's cleared away by uh, Saliba. And then Pepe with a, with a firm aerial challenge. That That's a free kick. Havertz, Havertz has gone down. It's a yellow card for Pepe who uh, put his hands to his chest, looked around, open-mouthed. It's what? not a yellow card. Do you not think? No. I think Pepe's gone in with his knee, though. That's the problem. And as well, it's been a number of occasions now. Maybe He's been influencing a lot. And as well, the fans are influencing the ref. That's how I, this yeah. Emirates Stadium can sort of ride that for the pitch as well for the I, players. I had eyes on his forearm, but his knee went into his ribs, actually. I was looking at his forearm. You've done contact. that in the past, wow. probably, surely. Maybe. Tell me after. Yeah, maybe. Forearm. Forearm, more <laughs> likely, but... His forearms were raised to head the ball. He didn't actually contact him with his forearm, but he, like you say, his knee went into his side. Perhaps that's what the referee saw, but it didn't look too bad a challenge for me. But that is a centre back speaking. Yeah, that's it's Matt happened Upson. to me before. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Upson, the centre back. Theo Walcott, the forward, with us <laughs> you, on Five Live tonight. Free kick for Arsenal. It's going to be taken by Odegaard. Down to the left to Trossard, who swings a dangerous looking ball in that is glance headed beyond the far post by uh, Saliba and behind for a goal kick so uh, we've got less than well just over 15 minutes to play it's gone quick isn't it hasn't it just, yeah and you know what I, you know what I mean it just has the feeling that there could be a really you, controversial you, moment in this you also feel you know the one worry is is that how many times have Arsenal been in this situation where they've gone out of this competition yeah, yeah. having
been in the driving seat or, or had the better of the game but not actually seen it over the line. Gabriel is really battling for it on the on the left winger. Just had a feeling there that Tempers might spill over, but uh, the the Porto players around have managed to smuggle the ball back, and uh, and the, and players stop because uh, Gabriel's actually gone down after all that near the halfway line. Yeah, it's, it's a good point, Matt. With Mikel Arteta as the Arsenal manager, previously in the in the three European ties that he's been involved in. They, they've gone out yep. here at the Emirates. That's absolutely, it, in matches where they've had massive chances to go through and it's just not, you know, they've, they've been the better team in the game probably and not been able to win. Yeah. And, you know, you don't want that to become a habit or a thing. And it's in your mind, you isn't it? Absolutely, that you feel. So sporting last year yeah. on penalties yeah. in the Europa League. Before that, the Europa League semi-final against Villarreal That's right, here. I remember um, one where the, a, a Bamiyang missed a massive chance in, in one of the games. I can't remember that three years ago. And it was also ago. Olympiacos. That might be that game. Yeah, Olympiacos yeah. when they went out That's after right. extra time and lost on away goals. <laughs> That's why I don't like that rule. <laughs> but tonight I feel like Arsenal, they slightly lost their discipline um, and they need to obviously start to now get control of the game instead of the actual occasion. Is Absolutely it, it go crucial. Back to, is, crucial. Is that desperation to want to win, Theo? Is that just an over-keenness oh. of you know, getting a little bit carried away in the moment? I understand that, of course, because like we say, it doesn't matter how any team's playing yeah. in this competition. It's all about results. And Porto have been in this position many occasions. And obviously Arsenal, this young, different, experienced team, are learning this. And they're only going to improve, but... They can learn a lot from Porto tonight. I mean, it was the first time they'd actually isolated Pepe for that incident with the pace, wasn't it? We haven't seen him all game be challenged with the ball over the top for running. That was the first time. So for me, the key is trying to get him in that position where they can get at him and get balls in behind him. Free kick given against Jorginho for a little foul on Evan Nielsen. And uh, Sergio Conceição has had something to say. I think Trossard might have said something back to him. And, uh, and the fourth official is rather meekly getting involved on the uh, on the halfway line. You're not sure about him, Johnny? No, I'm not. No. The way, the way he's, he's kind of lurking around those technical areas, isn't yeah. he? Not yeah. with a, not with a lot of purpose. No, as uh, ball forward from one goalkeeper to the other. Raya has got it. The other thing is, I was thinking today because of all of the UEFA big wigs were at the previous previously mentioned meeting today so of course they will all be here won't they yeah and the officials will know that oh, was, was there a meeting today <laughs> i'll tell you about it later yeah look forward to it here's raya who clears to saka over there on the far side but uh, otavio has got it back but his pass forward is cut out by a, a stretching white and now here is bukayo saka arsenal's 16 goal top scorer this season saka gets it back Sets off infield with the pass to Odegaard. Odegaard then curls one, which has almost reached Trossard. It was just, just cut out by João Mario. And now João Mario, he's carried it forward. He's given the pass to Pepe Aquino. They've got two men in the middle. Pepe Aquino with the pass towards Evan Nielsen on the edge of the penalty area. Oh. Saliba leaning into him. Evan Nielsen goes down. That's not given as a free kick. And Arsenal clear it up towards Saka. In comes the challenge from Otavio on Bukayo Saka to take ball and man and put it out for a throw. Ah, it's a well-timed tackle from Otavio. He had to get that right. It wasn't easy. I mean, the one before that, the ball goes into Evan Nielsen. He tries to use his body to shield it off Saliba. Saliba is really close and tight in contact, but he's not fouling him. And, and Evan Nielsen tries to lean back into him to win the foul. Oh. And Conte Sal, I mean, he just goes off on one, doesn't he? He has, yeah. And he's now been yellow carded. So that's, that is both Mikel Arteta and Sergio Conte Sal have now been shown yellow cards. There was another member of the backroom staff there, a little man with glasses on, who walked out and spoke to the assistant referee as well. I don't know what he was getting involved in. Uh, as the uh, play resumes again and there's another Arsenal man gone down Jorginho again he's taken some hammer during the course of this match he's on his feet it's only a throw in this is I mean it's a tough game to referee yeah. this yeah. Uh, throw in is taken for Havertz who stabs it back out to Saka Saka digs a pass to the edge of the penalty area that's cleared away by Conceição and now it's Pepe Aquino again into the centre circle Jorginho wow. slides wow. in on him and catches him that's a free kick that's the right decision. Crikey, look, the yellow card as well, for me. It did to me. 
It really did. Jorginho again felt like he was just struggling to get back and left a little bit on. Yeah, it's a yellow card. It's isn't probably it? a yellow card there. He's, he stopped the counter attack. Yeah. Again, he's using the experience. Knows he can get a book in. He's, he's lucky he's not got one there, to be honest. Yeah. I think the UEFA for big wigs up in the stand yeah. will have put a cross against him for that. Yeah. That, that was I mean, on the on the by the standards of what have would have been yellow cards in That's this a yellow match. Card, but, that but, was, should have been a bouquet. Because you, you, you've literally broken up the counter-attack by quite a cynical tail, mistimed tackles, going to ground, taking out a player right in the middle of the park. I mean, if ever there's an example of a yellow card, that was it. Uh, long, long pass from Diogo Costa, and it's reached João Mario, who then couldn't get the ball across. He's bouncing at pace. He tried to swing it over. He's, he's pulled something off the advertising hoardings there in frustration as well. And uh, it is a goal kick to Arsenal. We've got 10 minutes to go. I feel like the game now is 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 gone away from the way Arsenal play. Porto are happy with this. They're completely happy with the way they're playing right now. Frustrating, like we said, at the start of the game. They've, they've gone a little bit more attacking Porto, actually, haven't they? They're, they're, like, pressing a bit higher, trying to win the ball back, use their quick players to counter-attack. And as well, I don't feel like the referee, there's a lot of nasty tackles that... I feel like the ref needs to get control of some of the players, maybe the captains and have a word and just yeah. maybe start to show a few yellows because Jorginho there probably got away with one and just this, again their Porto player just left a little bit on Jorginho again. Well, it's right on the line this tie. Arsenal trying to get through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time since 2010 and extra time looks very possible with a scoreline of 1-0, 1-1 on aggregate. White infield now as it's bounced forward but Otavio's going to head it back to his goalkeeper I'll run you through all of the full-time scores when uh, when they begin to come in what is what is another thing is that neither coach has made a change yet no and we're in the last 10 minutes of the match yeah it's, it's, it's really unusual and, and I'm not sure if they look likely to be honest nobody's really signaling to the bench I think Nicola Tet has just looked to his bench and spoke to the staff but I don't see that much activity going on it's almost a game of polka, isn't it? Who's, yeah. go who's going to make the first change? Ball's played by Saliba, had to clear that away, but he did, volleyed it, sort of chest height. And then Havertz is caught by Pepe, who is on the yellow card, remember? It's, it's given us a free kick. And uh, actually, offside. Yeah. The offside flag I'll, was up yeah. against Havertz, so it's a free kick to Porter. We're talking about substitution right now, and I feel like just to break up a different sense, a different player, different personnel, I feel like Jesus could be that player yeah. that could disrupt this this back four in a different style. Havertz has probably been a little bit quieter in the second half, not some, making so much yeah. runs in behind. It hasn't been influenced so much in this game now, I feel, and I feel like that maybe could be one of the first I subs. think he's stripping off. Yeah, you just you just said that. I think he's now, looks like he's getting ready. Yeah, it's just, just... Could this be Jorginho? And then Havertz dropping back into midfield. I mean, you have said about Jorginho, but he maybe. feels as though he, Jorginho, feels like he's important in this sort of match. I would agree. I would agree with that. And whether or not, fitness-wise, I'm sure Havertz probably has a bit more in the tank, but it's not always about that. It's about managing the game and having an influence on the pitch. And I think Jorginho, in this situation, probably is the best man for the job. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We're going to find out now as uh, Jesus walks forward. And it is Jorginho who makes way. And uh, he, he's put in a big effort tonight, Jorginho. He, he is cheered off for that. And Mikel Arteta, of course, walks across and actually shakes hands, arms round him. So that's it, first change. Yeah, he's done a good job, Jorginho. He's done what he's in there to do. He's kept Arsenal tight. He's kept them ticking over. Now is a different option. And I think the pace of Jesus, certainly in and around Pepe, you've got to try and isolate him in those one-on-one -on -one situations. Poor clearance by Porto. Odegaard lifts it out to the right to Saka, who is in the penalty area. Back to Odegaard, onto his left foot, trying to wriggle away through. Uh, the challenge came in on him, the block, it bounces back into the area. Jesus, with a chance that was deflected wide. His first touch in the match on the corner of the six-yard box. And somehow, Diogo Costa got something on that, the goalkeeper corner. I didn't quite see what happened. I mean, it, it looked like yeah, it did deflect off the goalkeeper, it went wide, but Jesus... For that to come to him on his first touch, really, and try and swivel and hit it, it was a difficult one, but, yeah, corner to Arsenal. Jesus, four goals in the Champions League in the group stage before Christmas. Corner, Saka plays it into the near post, there's a man gone down, it was, it was headed away in any case by Galeno. 
and it's a, a free kick to Porto on the edge of the six yard box we have got six minutes just over six minutes to play uh, back to Portsmouth Chris White Portsmouth 2 Burton 1 2 goals from Cassini Yengi 1 back from John Brayford for Burton so Portsmouth still 5 points clear at the top Burton still 5 clear of the relegation zone Pompey 2 Burton 1 these are the full time scores in League 1 Carlisle 2 Barnsley 3 Fleetwood 0 Bristol Rovers 0 Leighton Orient 0 Port Vale 0 Lincoln 6 in the end Cambridge 0 Northampton 0 Blackpool 1 uh, Shrewsbury 0 Exeter 3 Wickham 1 Wigan 0 Saka for Arsenal to the edge of the area left foot shot Costa goes down makes the save then it's driven wide by Odegaard arriving on his left foot edge of the area but he pulled it narrowly wide the Benson shot and put his hands to his face well that, me, that for me was the impact of Gabriel Jesus it comes into his thigh he lays it up and the speed at which he turns and gets in behind he gets the wrong side of the defender he creates the space it goes to Saka the shot comes in with his left foot rebounds off the goalkeeper and Martin Odegaard I think he'll be disappointed with that finish I think he's technically on his left foot he can hit that ball better he just kind of tops it into the ground and puts it wide but for me he's got the quality to hit the target there with real power probably should do better what do you think Theo? I totally agree I feel like yes that Jesus he's, he's a different player he's sharp that, wouldn't it he's that player that creates moments out of yeah. nothing like he's a player that in small tight areas he can just create and that's different personnel now Arsenal plays slightly different to his strengths and yes I, again I think Odegaard will be very disappointed in that but you see his reaction afterwards that he doesn't just put his head down he gets the fans behind him again and Arsenal attack again uh, what's happening in the other tie tonight Barcelona Napoli Conor McNamara Barcelona are going through to the quarterfinals. Robert Lewandowski has just finished off a slick move. It makes it Barcelona 3, Napoli 1. Barca on their way through now, and it was coming. Napoli had a good patch in the central third of the game, but Barcelona banging on the door for the last 10 minutes. They need 3-1 of the night, 4-2 in aggregate. So they'll be in Friday morning's draw. You'll hear that with us on 5 Live. More Cheltenham tomorrow, by the way, from 1 o'clock excellent coverage today I would recommend it to you Sports Extra tomorrow afternoon and then Atletico Madrid Inter live from Madrid tomorrow night here's Saka attacking for Arsenal corner of the area pulls it back centrally ball slipped into the box but it rolls all the way through from Odegaard via a deflection it's a corner to Arsenal and uh, Porto have made a change they're going to make another one they've brought on Jorge Sanchez the Mexican international at right back for João Mario who uh, who is now taking his seat on the bench and also they're going to bring on Medi Karemi who's been out of the picture lately experienced Iranian World Cup player scored against England at the World Cup and he's going to come on he's been out of the picture because he's he's going to be off to Inter at the end of the season Corner then to Arsenal. Saka takes it in, and Arsenal man's gone down. It's caught by goalkeeper Costa, who will race to the edge of his area and clear it downfield to be taken down by Pepe Aquino. And then in comes an excellent tackle from Rice to put it out for a throw on the left. Matt Upson. Oh, wins for a moment there. I, I wasn't sure if Declan won that ball, but I think he got a foot to it and put it wide. He had to get the tackle right. I mean, it. How quick was the counter-attack? Keeper saw the run over the top. It was a brilliant kick and first touch, wasn't it? A good tackle from Declan Rice. Uh, Full-time Birmingham Middlesbrough, Chris Coles. A win for Middlesbrough, Riley McGree's first half screamer, enough to move them to within five points of the playoffs. Birmingham improved after a woeful first half, although not by much. They remain in trouble, a point and a place above the relegation zone. Birmingham nil, Middlesbrough one. Also in League One, the final score, Derby Reading, Tom Gale. B2, Reading 1, John Derby stay a point clear in the automatic places. Howrahan's winning penalty, 10-man Reading remain five points above the drop. Full-time, Derby 2, Reading 1. Taremi has come on, Mehdi Taremi, experienced goal scorer, 31 years old. He's sort of come in from the cold for this tie. Long throw for Porto into the box, deflects across the area. And we are now in the 88th minute of this tie all square on aggregate so we've reached that stage as uh, Porto concede a free kick Arsenal free kick halfway inside their own half we've reached that stage where a goal will very likely win it oh absolutely a goal now and it, it, it's all over both teams fighting really hard just to create the opportunities it's been quite a well balanced second half Ars Arsenal with a lot of pressure 
good set plays, really creating some chances, and also Porto on the counter have looked a threat as well. It is really well poised this game. What a tight match. It really is. We're heading to extra time. Unless, unless. Ball over the top. Pepe heads it away. Havertz then nods it forward. Ball is headed away up towards Taremi, who's gone down under the challenge from Gabriel and wins, wins the free kick, as you'll probably have gathered. And uh, Gabriel and referee Turpin are in discussions. Uh, final scores in League Two. Wimbledon 2, Gillingham 0. Forest Green are out of the bottom three. They've won 2-0 at Bradford City. Crawley 2, Notts County 1. Crew 1, Sutton 0. Drimsby 1, MK Dons 0. Newport won 5-3 against Morecambe. Swindon 1, Accrington 2. The leaders are beaten. Tranmere 2, Mansfield 1. Walsall 1, Barrow 1. And Wrexham 0, Harrogate Town 0. Still playing at Bolton. Bolton 5-0 up in the 8 o'clock kickoff. This was an 8 o'clock kickoff. We're now in the 90th minute as the ball's played forward over the top of Conceição and all the way through to, to goalkeeper Raya. So extra time, just a matter of seconds away. The fourth official is just waiting to come forward to put up his ball. David Raya heading this ball high downfield. Many thought Arsenal would comfortably turn this around, but it's not the case. And there are just three minutes of added time to be played before we will be heading to extra time. Odegaard trying to change all that. Odegaard, who did have the ball in the net, but the goal was controversially ruled out. Odegaard plays it through to Saka, pulls it back from the dead ball line. And then uh, that is cleared away by Varela and out for another Arsenal corner. Well, they're one of the famous set-piece teams, Arsenal, this season. Let's see where they, if they can do it now when it really, really matters. I mean, Porto have been so well drilled, haven't they? Set plays, you saw him in the warm-up. Can they defend this one as well? Odegaard's going to take this from the right-hand side. Arm raised, left-footed delivery of the near post. That's headed up and away. Excellent from, I think it was Galeno again. Such an important player defensively. Saka then will deliver a high ball over everyone and beyond the far post and behind... And a number of Arsenal fans just to our left here. They've obviously been busting. <laughs> they've disappeared. Well, <laughs> thinking that it's going to be extra time, they've disappeared into the concourse. So, uh, goal I mean, kick. I mean, well, it's, it's, only, been, it's only three minutes, isn't there? I was going to say, yeah. Added time, it's not, it's not that much either. No, but Arsenal seem to be... They like... There's been a lot of goals in the last few minutes they've scored in the yeah. Premier League, haven't they, recently? So, I wouldn't leave your seat if I was you right now. No, that's risky. Yeah. It is a bold move. Uh, 90 seconds to go of added time. Goal now absolutely wins it and sends whoever scores it through to the quarterfinals, and that's a heavy touch from Havertz coming forward from midfield now after the change was made. Gabriel Jesus through the middle, it's out of play. It's going to be a Porto attack. A Porto attack in the second minute of added time. Throwing is taken quickly. Wendell over there on the far side, that's excellently won back and it's turned forward to Odegaard and Odegaard, little ball infield to Jesus then that goes back to the Arsenal captain, the Norwegian Odegaard, just economical ball to the left hand side, Kivio's joined the attack here's Trossard, come on Arsenal someone shouts down there to our left Declan Rice and we are now in the third and final minute of added time here Rice to Saka, Saka as they attack the North Bank stand Arsenal in possession, Rice, again it goes square to Kivior, then back again to the halfway line, Gabriel, Declan Rice now with his heels on the halfway line, begins to move forward and then passes it to Ben White on the right flank, Porto's blue and white stripes park behind the ball, Saka twisting and turning against Wendell, he's managed to get the ball back, and then White infield, nice turn by Odegaard, into the area to Jesus, back to Odegaard, or oh, turn! Oh. He goes down, there's a challenge in there, I'm not sure it's a penalty despite the shouts. And uh, referee Turpan waves whatever claims there were away, and Kivio wins the ball on the halfway line. I mean, it's just a marvel how Martin Odegaard can operate in such a tight area, lovely footwork. He does a full kind of pirouette spin using his body to rotate out of a situation, shield the ball. It's such a tight little one-two, Saka, him and Saka all linking together tries to flick it with the left foot onto his right foot it's that man Pepe 
all over him. There's not a foul as Martin Odegaard goes to ground. It's just his kind of momentum and can't get his footwork quite right. He, he falls over, but... You know, Porto, the players have been everywhere. The, the energy they've put in defensively tonight has been superb. It'll be interesting if they can keep that up in extra time. Yeah, it's not over yet. The Porto player is down. He's got cramp, actually, so he's receiving treatment for that field. Yeah, I feel Arsenal, they they train this. They train these sort of situations. They, and I, I love the fact that when they get into those patterns of play, particularly in the final third, they speed it up so quickly and it's effortless. They, they don't even think about it. They, they It's off the training drill. And, yeah, I didn't feel like it was enough for a penalty at all. I think Pepe did everything right, using his experience, and now they are using the experience knowing they want to take it away to extra time. And I think it's going to be a very nervy 30 minutes going into this uh, extra time. Yeah, so uh, still play has to resume, even though we are in the fifth minute of added time now. This is lengthy, lengthy treatment for uh, Who is it, Varela, Varela yeah. Yeah, who... Uh, seems to have cramp in both legs <laughs> I mean have you had cramp you yeah. must have had cramp before have you John have you had cramp before yeah you must well have cramp famously <laughs> oh really <laughs> <laughs> let's not go there <laughs> okay the hamstring is that, is, yeah the hamstring yeah, yeah. Sorry, is, that, is that to be filed away with you away for me I've, <laughs> yeah. I've had a I've had every sort of cramp I would say hamstring it's not nice cramp. is it no it's no. not a nice it's like a shot and, and he's put a shift in both the two young centre midfield players have, have done a great job responsibility defensively I mean the stretch is coming on whether or it not is. he'll continue but but you feel that fitness is, is going to play a part it's been such a hard fought game hasn't it and as well do you feel like this is going to be the pattern as well going into extra time they're going to want to take it to penalties right maybe yeah. yeah well it looks as though Varela is going to have to be stretched off so it's a good time to get the full time like, news like you John <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't need a I just no. needed your brilliant okay. medical advice okay. with my hamstring. No stretcher needed. Uh, Bolton, Oxford, Adam Cotier. Bolton 5, Oxford nil. Five different goal scorers as Bolton stay on the coattails of Derby, who they play on Saturday. Ogbetta, Dakras Cogley, Thomason, Collins and Sheehan with a low raking left foot shot completed the scoring. Bolton 5, Oxford nil. Well, Varela's being stretched off and, and that's it for him. So Porto are going to make a change. Uh, so it looks like extra time here, but not confirmed just yet. Uh, what about the other match tonight? Are Barcelona through with Bayern Munich, Manchester City, Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain? Conor McNamara. Yes, Barcelona go through and for the first time in a knockout stage game in the Champions League, they started with two players under the age of 18. They ended up being the stars of the show. Yamal in attack, who was full of invention. Kubasi at the back, who withstood uh, intense pressure from Napoli at one stage. But Lewandowski's goal right at the end sealed it. It gave Barcelona the cushion. 4-2 on aggregate. They're through to the quarterfinals. Thank you, uh, Connor. That is a powerful last eight lineup, is it not? Uh, so Varela is going to be replaced by Marco Grujic. You might remember him from his younger days at Liverpool. Actually went on loan to Cardiff at one time, the uh, Serbian international. So we might see him in the group at the Euros in the summer, in England's group. And he's on to replace Alan Varela. So still we play. We're in the seventh minute of added time now after only three were indicated, but it took quite some time to treat Varela. Still we play. Concisau playing it forward. Here's Taremi racing down into the full-back position. Galeno's waiting inside the penalty area. Concisau back to Taremi. Concisau drives it across. Double deflection, which bounces back across the penalty area and is cleared away. I mean, that, that, that is ridiculous from... The, 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 the linesman I mean me and Theo say it's a clear offside he's let that play develop all the way on John I mean there's tired legs out there this this for me is where the complaint is where, where injuries happen because you allow that to play on just get your flag up it's, it's offside you hit the nail on the head there I, I, I've seen previous things in the Premier League when this happens when the linesman yes I understand they need to play into a point but when it's that clear back yourself exactly that you know what I mean it's, it, it's almost like that's gone out of the game and that is the final whistle so extra time extra time to decide who goes here to to join that stellar lineup so far in the last eight of the competition is it going to be arsenal is it going to be porto we'll find out in the next half hour possibly three quarters of an hour arsenal one porto nil so one one on aggregate kelly kate john murray a commentator here at the emirates alongside him matthew upson and theo walcott theo 
As much as this is Porto's game plan, as much as they are setting out to, to spoil and frustrate, Arsenal knew this was coming. Do Arsenal have what it takes to unlock this game in, in extra time? Well, I mean, not just me, but everyone in this whole stadium feels that they can. I mean, Arsenal, I felt like they've gone away from their patterns of play. They've gone away from the way they've been performing the whole season. And Porto have created that trap. They really have. And like I say, I think now, Mikel will get them all together now. You can see them sort of huddled there together. And again, he'll be going back to, look, we need to get back to our principles of how we perform and how we play. And we've gone away from that. We've let them frustrate us constantly by creating these little fouls. We, we, that's not us. And again, it's something where I believe that Arsenal, they need to forget about Porto to some extent. I know it sounds very strange to forget about them and remember the, the qualities that we had, they have in that team. And they got they got so many. And as well, I feel like not right now, fitness is going to come come up come up to play now. And Arsenal, this will see if anyone else on the bench, I'm not so sure if he's, he'll he look towards the bench as well because Mikel doesn't normally do this. But it's going to be a very interesting last next 15, 30 minutes. Matt, you mentioned earlier playing for Tony Pulis at, at Stoke and, and being in one of those teams that set out to, to frustrate yeah. and to make life difficult for, for the opposition. In that instant, how tiring is that? Could, could that be the key here? Could we end up with the levels of concentration required for Porto to do this being a factor? Yeah, because the, the one big thing when you get physically tired is it affects you mentally. You know, your decision making just and your judgment just drops down a notch. And, You'll see that in this extra time, the tired legs and then it'll be tired minds. And it's, it's the one that can stay focused the best, the one that can make the best decisions on the pitch. And that starts to come in to extra time. So it's going to be fascinating to see how Arsenal do cope. A lot of players who haven't been in these situations in this competition very often. And, and I think this is a great experience for them. And, and it, it could really go either way. I'm not surprised you, the game plan does go out of the window a little bit sometimes because like the emotion of all this is a lot, isn't it? You can feel it in the crowd, you can feel it in the stadium and I'm not surprised the players sometimes react with it as well. There's another 30 minutes to come from the Emirates after the BBC News with Nick Hatfield. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Good evening. Downing Street has called a comment allegedly made by the Conservative donor Frank Hester about the MP Diane Abbas, racist and wrong. Mr Hester has insisted the remarks had nothing to do with gender or skin colour. He's reported to have made them in a private meeting in 2019. The Health Minister, Maria Caulfield, says the alleged comments were unacceptable. I've been very clear, I don't agree with that, I condemn those comments, I personally do find them racist, it's not something that we should be um, uh, kind of excusing in any way. You know, as female MPs, we have to stick together in terms of the abuse that we all face, uh, and particularly racist abuse is something that should not be tolerated. A man and a woman arrested in connection with an investigation into a funeral directors in Hull have been released on bail. Humberside police say they've removed 35 bodies and what are believed to be human ashes from legacy independent funeral directors. A court in Romania has agreed to extradite the social media influencer Andrew Tate and his brother Tristan to the UK to face charges of rape and sexual assault. But the extradition won't take place until they've stood trial in Romania on separate human trafficking charges. The brothers deny all the allegations against them. A ship towing a barge loaded with almost 200 tonnes of food aid has left Cyprus for Gaza. It's the first shipment along a maritime corridor which is hoped will bring much needed assistance to the territory. And NHS England has confirmed that children will no longer be prescribed puberty blockers at gender identity clinics. Puberty blockers which cause the physical changes of puberty to be paused will now be available to children only as part of clinical research trials. It comes after the NHS NHS commissioned an independent review in 2020 of gender identity services for under 18s. This is Five Live Sport with Kelly Cates on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Extra time at the Emirates with Matthew Upson, Theo Walcott, and John Murray. Well, extra time has not yet begun because there's a discussion going on on the side of the pitch. The fourth official and some of the Porto staff and uh, I'm, I'm not really sure what that is about maybe about the 
number of substitutes oh, it looks like that you're are allowed because obviously you can have an extra substitute can't you in yeah. uh, in extra time looks like your fourth official's kicking into action <laughs> he is yeah. he's, he's been quite busy down there in the, the second law half. down now <laughs> right off we go arsenal one porto nil one one on aggregate arsenal in this first period of extra time, playing from left to right towards the clock stand, where all of the Porto fans are in that corner. If you've been here as a visiting fan, you'll know exactly where they are, low down around the corner. And I noticed as well, just in the in the break between the end of uh, the 90 minutes and extra time, many of the Porto substitutes are actually orchestrating the fans and getting the Porto fans to make a noise. And they've reacted to that over in their part of the Emirates Stadium as Arsenal play for it. Jesus heads it out to Saka, who slips the ball in between the legs of the defender to Jesus, inside the area, turns the defender, Wendell gets the ball across and it's cleared away on the edge of the six-yard box. And, and that's what I'm talking Kansas about Saka. as well with, in regards to Jesus, how he create something out of nothing. He used his body brilliantly, didn't he? I mean, he's got that low centre of gravity, came into his feet, I mean, it was lovely ball from Saka as well, fed inside. I mean, I thought it was going to be a penalty for a moment there, but Wendell, who... He's actually had a good game, hasn't he, the Brazilian left-back. He's, he's had a lot to do. I mean, he's been up against Saka, which has been a real handful, but he's coped really well. He's defended the box brilliantly. So it is a throw into Porto in their own left-back area. Just switched on to five live tonight. We're in no extra time in the Champions League, and we, we are Arsenal and England heavy with Theo Walcott and Matt Upson alongside us in the stadium here. As Jesus was body bounced by Wendell, no free kick. Otavio is able to, to get to the ball. Jesus jumps into the challenge <laughs> with Otavio. And then uh, Saka's there as well, next to the dead ball line. And the assistant down here to the right says, after all of that, it's a goal kick. It looked a little bit like Strictly there, the way it James sort of, sort it of was did a pure coming unusual. into him. Um, it's like Ronaldo-like, wasn't it, almost, the way that he landed? Uh, as in the celebration, the yeah. goal celebration. Yeah. yeah, he kind of jumped, one arm in the air, planted. It was a yeah. very unusual challenge, shall we say. Yeah. It is a, a goal kick, then. Remains to be seen what sort of extra time we're going to have. This discussion is still going on here about... It must be about the, the substitutes. And... Uh, is, it, is, that, is that the little guy with glasses? It is, it's the little about. man with the anorak and yeah. the glasses. Again, he's been heavily involved he in that, hasn't he? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, he's, and he's going now, he's giving Sergio Conceição some instructions. He's quite red-faced as well now. We're in the third minute of extra time. The Arsenal fans on their feet, twirling their red and white scarves. Ball over the top that is headed down by uh, Gabriel. And then Wendell is able to uh, put it out of play just next to Arteta and Nicola Arteta also turns and he is urging the, the home fans to make more noise as well and, and to combat the noise that is coming out of that blue and white section where the Porto fans are. Ben White with a throw in down the line that Jesus tries to, to head on. Jesus nicked it away from Otavio who's gone down, wants the free kick, it's not being given. Saka then claims he was tripped. He went down and the referee does give the free kick Arsenal's way. He takes his time, the referee does. He doesn't rush into the decision. Takes a long, hard look at this. It's a real good bit of pressure from Gabriel Jesus. And then Saka wins it and it is a foul for me from Otavio. Puts his leg out, takes out Saka. And there's a free kick which for me is tailor-made for Martin Odegaard's left foot in swinging. It's on the right-hand side of the pitch, probably about... 12 yards out from the corner of the 18-yard box, but what a great opportunity. Are we going to see that cat and mouse again mm. with Porto wanting to keep a high line and Arsenal standing offside? It doesn't look like it. We're later on in the game. The freshness isn't quite there from Porto. It looks like they're just going to sit a bit deeper and just defend along that kind of penalty spot line. Yeah, so the free kick that Odegaard is going to play in from the right flank. We do have three Arsenal players standing in an offside position. And, and actually, there are some instructions being sent across there from uh, Saliba to to Odegaard. So Rice has actually come across now from the edge of the area. Rice is there just to make them think a little. Odegaard runs up to it. Rice runs up to it. Odegaard takes it, left-footed. It's flicked on. Havertz bounces back across to Saka, but bounces down into the path of Otavio, who's able to volley it out. And it bounces possibly off the front of the tier above where we're sitting. Arsenal take a quick throw. Rice leans back and passes it to 
Saliba, who gives it back to Declan Rice. Declan Rice. Then to the left-hand side. Arsenal, who in the end came up with the crucial goal on Saturday night here. So this is a, a second match here at the Emirates in the space of four days where the, the stakes are extremely high. And Arsenal are expected to come up with the answer and come up with the goal as the uh, ball is played across by Gabriel to Saliba and Saliba lifts it to the right instep of Ben White who is then challenged at close quarters Wendell taps it out of play I mean we're sat right behind the Porto technical area and it can, you know Arsenal's one with Mikel Arteta that we make quite a lot of fuss about about how animated he is he's nothing against this guy do you know what I mean he has been trying to see how many steps he's done today. Patrolling that technical yeah. area, Sergio Conte Sal, like I've never seen. Yeah. He ruffles feathers. He does. Do you remember he upset Pep Guardiola? He's very animated, isn't and, he? Uh, it's a throw into Arsenal again. Arsenal are uh, are very much playing this first half of extra time in the Porto half. So we will be going later tonight, Five Live Sports. So Gordon Smart will take over when we're finished here. So uh, Gordon will be waiting. Arsenal are waiting, throwing taken into Odegaard who wins a corner, first corner of extra time. This for me is where it's got to happen for Arsenal. They've showed all season how dangerous they are. It's, the game's tired, it's ragged, but set plays, you get a chance to get yourself organised. The quality of the delivery is right. Arsenal surely going to capitalise eventually from one of these corners. Saka to take this one. Rice is uh, taking up a position on the edge of the penalty area. Ben White's in the six-yard box. Jesus as well, Kibio's there, here comes the delivery from Saka into the near post, headed away by Galeno, didn't clear the penalty area but he did find a teammate in uh, Concesao who, 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 who ran it away, uh, Pepe Aquino who ran it away and actually played the ball to the halfway line, then the challenge came in, he threw himself down but the referee rightly said you weren't in control of the ball, so play continues and it is Arsenal on the left-hand side. Jesus, I think, might have overrun that. He runs into Pepe, who keeps his feet. And Pepe is cheered to the rafters by the Porto fans down there. And it's a goal kick to the visitors from Portugal. Yeah, just simple play, wasn't it? Just drifted across, used his body really well there, Pepe. Saw the ball out of play and, again, just slowed the game down. Porto now attacking their time with a goal kick. And the great thing about Pepe there when you watch him, he's so emotional. You just see him, yeah. he just pump his away support in that corner and that's just going to give them that extra boost that they need as well. So when Pepe Aquino gets the ball, he, he's got some quick feet in there. He's got that rapid kind of cadence on the ball. He did really well there on the box. He had a great touch, played it into space. It looked like he got fouled, but he's a player for me that on the counter-attack can really make something happen. And, and, and he's had a couple of impacts when they broke Porto. He's very quick across the ground. Well, the, uh, there's going to be a double Portuguese substitution to come, so whatever the discussion has been, they are going to bring on subs four and five, and strictly speaking, of Penal course... Penalty takers, maybe? Possibly. Estacchio is one of them, Borges is another, who's a right winger, although it's early, isn't it, in, in extra yeah. time. It's a free kick to Arsenal in the centre circle for a, a challenge by Grujic, another of the substitutes, and... Um, and we will see those changes presently, although we're only halfway through the first period of extra time. So, um, the ball is thrown back to Declan Rice, who will take this. And he takes the free kick from the centre circle, short to his right, to Gabriel, to um, Saliba. Back to Rice, right-footed pass. Ben White is beaten in the air by Wendell. And then it bounces down off the left back for a throw into Arsenal, just down in front of us to our right. Saka and White together. Ben White. White wristbands on, just holding the ball above his head, takes the throw to Kai Havertz, then back to White. It just turns it round the defender to Saka. Wendell dives in, good touch on the ball. Saka tried to leave it to roll over the line for a corner, but defenders were there. Arsenal low, forcing them back. Rice's pass through just beyond Saka and through to the goalkeeper. Yeah, I don't think Saka was quite ready for it. I don't think he was anticipating Declan Rice to fire that ball, break the line into the box. Arsenal so good in those areas on the corner of the boxes, little almost kind of rondos they create, 4v3s, 4v2s to work the ball and Saka just on his heels there a little bit. I'll tell you, he's not been on his heels that Wendell tonight. He's been an absolute, he has been good, hasn't he? He's been really good to yeah, watch. You know, he's an absolute present. He's uh, 
great on the ball, physically he's an athlete. He's, he's really done really very well, Sakata. It's been a really good battle between them. Long pass forward from Gonzalez, reaches Sergio Conceição, middle of the Arsenal half. He has Taremi on the left-hand side, the Iranian with the gloves on. Taremi into the box, might get a chance to shoot across goal, which he does, but beyond the far post. And it is a, a goal kick for Arsenal. That's a warning. Yeah, Kiwar just a little bit sloppy with the ball there. Didn't deal with it well enough in the left back position. And Porto were quick to get bodies forward. They had three, four players joining in the attack, and Taremi just puts it wide at the far post. Uh, changes being made now by Porto. So Nico Gonzalez is going off from the midfield. So both the two of them, the 22 year olds, Varela and Gonzalez, have now gone. And uh, Francisco Conceição is coming off. So that's a straight swap as well with Gonzalo Borges, uh, is coming on. Portuguese under 21 international. And uh, Stephen Eustachio is coming on into the midfield. Canadian World Cup player. So uh, straight swaps both in midfield and on the right wing. Uh, great work from producer George Cummins, who has been trolling the internet and has managed to identify Luis Gonçalves is the little man in the anorak. <laughs> and he is the Porto sporting director. Ah. And my goodness me, has he directed yes. today? Plays a very active role, John. He does. As, uh, don't see Edu down there, do we? No. Here is uh, Saliba on the edge of the penalty area, passing the ball back to Raya, who clears into the centre circle, headed forward by Pepe, and now Estacu to Galeno. Galeno with his socks almost down on his ankles. Galeno down the left, uh, plays it into White, and it bounces back onto the, the Portuguese player and uh, through for a goal kick. He's got smoothness about him, Galeno, hasn't he? He's got that, that kind of slow, lopey look, the socks are rolled down, but when he needs to turn it on and step in and create something, I think he's got it in his locker. He looks a little bit tired and leggy now. He's putting a lot of work in that wide area. He's been tracking Ben White up and down the Arsenal right-hand side all game. Porto are still dangerous. They still have the ability to hurt Arsenal if they go to sleep at the back. Five live from the BBC. Champions League drama, this tight tussle, this tight tie. They've been very well matched, these two sides, the two coaches. And Sergio Conceição, as Kai Havertz volleyed the ball off the field, uh, he, he ended up right next to Conceição, and, and Havertz did push him. He did push the Porto coach, who stayed on his feet. Kai Havertz then uh, quickly got himself away from the, the scene of this. But... Um, what the referee will do here, whether it's just a kicking off or not, yeah. he didn't need to get involved in that. No, he, he didn't. It was almost like Conte South coming out of his technical area to, to uh, control get a ball the ball. Yeah, it was going out of play, and Havertz wanted it, and it forced Havertz not to get it quickly. And then Havertz gave him a little shove, and it was it was cheeky, wouldn't it? But it, it was nothing more than that for me. Again, I feel like he was probably trying to test his touch with those trainers he was wearing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure with him, very decent. Yeah, well, yeah, like Velcro. Mm. No further action taken. No. No yellow card for Havertz. And Sergio Conceição has already been shown yeah, a yellow card. I, I think so. that's the right outcome, to be honest, John. Yeah, there, was, there was not a lot in there. Yeah. Uh, first half of extra time almost over. And, and really, neither goalkeeper has had a save to make in this first period of extra time. And that has been the case throughout yeah. the course of this tie, really. Yeah. There have been few chances, whether it was here or in certainly in the first leg. It, has, three, it hasn't been a spectacle of... Of fantastic football no it? it has not and and but it's been really engaging yeah. and really interesting in a different way tactically it's been fascinating yeah. and the way that Porto was taking the game to how they want it to go that suits them uh, Zinchenko All credit is, to them Zinchenko has been called forward and I have to say as well it does it, I think this really sends out a message to some Premier League clubs about what they might be capable of doing against Arsenal because um, they have They've taken an innovative and effective approach, Porto, in this tie. Ball over the top, down the right-hand side. This is for uh, the, the newly arrived Gonzalo Borges to, uh, to chase, but he won't reach that, and it is a goal kick. So Zinchenko will come onto the field. Bags of talk about Champions League experience. There's plenty there for, for him. And whether it's going to be a straight swap, you would think probably. And, and Ketia is actually coming on as well. Eddie Nketiah has not scored in his last 10 appearances. 
and uh, and opportunities have actually been quite few and far apart for him. One minute of added time at the end of this first period of extra time, and it, it looks as though those changes will probably come at half time and extra time. And we're talking about moments again, and Eddie's been probably waiting for it. Nketiah's been waiting for his moment for a long time in this Arsenal team, and you know he's going to have to look at himself and look at his strengths and try and change this game, which. I'm sure as a substitute, that is your job. And of course, as in Zinchenko, all the experience in the world he's had, he's learned from, from the best. He's going to provide that sort of calmness, which I feel like has gone away from the game at the moment. Nketiah has been involved in some big moments, isn't he? In, in tight games, in, late on as well. So, you know, he's no stranger to that, is he? He, he can be effective. And even just seeing him now, stood in his halfway line, he looks very different right now. He looks very focused. Yeah. He's in the zone and I feel like when you've got Eddie in the zone like that Niketia, it's not a bad thing play continues and actually Zinchenko standing and, and talking to him the two of them you know virtually heads together there as the half time whistle goes in extra time so the uh, the changes will be made by Arsenal now and, and Nikola Teta is calling all of the staff together for another team talk before the second half of extra time so there we are in the break in extra time, Arsenal 1, Porto 0, remains the score, so still 1-1 one, one on aggregate. 15 minutes away from penalties, Kelly. And in the meantime, we're going to head straight to California for the latest from Indian Wells with Russell Fuller. Defending champion Carlos Alcaraz through to the quarter-finals. Some extravagant running down the line forehand winners from Alcaraz in the second set in particular as he beat Fabian Marishan of Hungary 6-3, 6-3. He'll wait to find out whether his quarter-final opponent on Thursday will be either Alex Zverev or Alex Dimonor of Australia. Thank you very much for that, Russell. We are 105 minutes into this Champions League tie on the night. The last 16 second leg, it's one all on aggregate, one nil to Arsenal on the night. Can they make the breakthrough in the next 15 minutes or are we heading to penalties? Mikel Arteta about to make a couple of substitutions. Matt, are you surprised that he hasn't made more than one substitution before this? Jesus came on for Jorginho yeah. in, in 90 minutes and then... There's a couple of players ready to come on with a strong bench, that's surprising. It, it is interesting, but I think he just had belief or he liked the way it was poised, you know, for whatever reason, who knows what goes on in managers' heads in these moments and what they see and feel. I, I agree, it is quite strange, but he, I think he just feels the team had it, has got it under control, he wants to leave it in the direction it's going and you know, I'm just watching Dron draw his lines for penalties, obviously looking forward to the shootout. But. <laughs> Fail to prepare, prepare to fail, <laughs> is John Murray's motto. With you for the second half of extra time at the Emirates. We are 15 minutes away from penalties. Can Arsenal progress to the quarterfinals for the first time in 10 years? With you, Matthew Watson, Theo Walcott and John Murray. Right, the Andro Trossard and, uh, and also Kivio are, uh, are off. So... Um, Jesus playing wide yeah, on the left. <laughs> He'll come out wide on the left and Ketia down the middle, Saka on the right. And I think that, you know, that's, that's, that's real fresh legs. You've got Jesus and Ketia, very pacey, sharp players in and around the box. Maybe that can make the difference for Arsenal in this second half of extra time. There's some tired Porto defenders out there. Yeah, and Zinchenko, Champions League runner up with Manchester City in the great city of Porto against Chelsea. He's on at left back and he's already he's already directing operations there. You know, that's the kind of thing that uh, can be of great assistance in these sort of circumstances. And um, Porto getting the second half of extra time underway. Matt Upson and Theo Walcott with us and the ball out of play for uh, a goal kick for uh, uh, Porto. The, there's two balls on the field. That's what the delay is. So goalkeeper Diogo Costa who kept out Gabriel Jesus late on in the 90 minutes to help take this match into extra time. Gordon Smart waiting, he will follow on 5 Live once we've wrapped everything up here. Barcelona already through, more Champions League commentary tomorrow night from Madrid. Atletico against last season's runners-up Inter, but over the course of the next 20 minutes and whatever it takes, we will bring you the, the drama. Either Arsenal or Porto will go through. Right, curling the ball out to the far side, where Ben White takes it down. Odegaard to his left, Saka up ahead, but 
White puts his foot on the ball, then passes it through to Saka. Uh, Odegaard actually slips over there, but Saka keeps possession, gives it back towards the halfway line. Arsenal in this second period attacking towards the North Bank stand. That's the end where they've scored so many of these late goals this season to win matches. And now uh, Arsenal with Zinchenko, the fair-haired Ukrainian. Forward towards Jesus, who is now on the left flank, but that is intercepted by Borges for Porto. And uh, Porto bringing it forward with Pepe Aquino. He keeps his feet well against Jesus and then lays a pass to the right-hand side where Borges actually has to race and keep it in next to the corner flag on the right. Runs his foot over it, then passes it infield straight into Zinchenko. Hit the first defender. And then Jesus back to Zinchenko, who's being put under pressure there. And, uh, and in the end, he concedes a corner, which is, believe it or not, Porto's first corner of the match. Wow. I mean, it was quick feet again from Pepe Aquino, was it? When he drives with that ball in the middle of the pitch, he is dangerous. He's got some sharp feet on him, Theo. He's got tremendous pace, you know, even at this stage of 110 yeah. minutes we've played right now, and he's still putting that output. And even there with the corner with Zinchenko, the way he sort of tried to shepherd it out, and it's just hit his back of his heels, I suppose, and it's giving them this corner right now, and Arsenal need to switch on right now. Yeah, Wendell is going to take this then, the left back. So left-footed corner, Wendell, it's a high, deep one to the back post that Raya comes for and makes a good catch. Got both gloves either side of it. He was being buffeted, but he managed to hold it, and then he delivers it downfield for Havertz, who gets up well and heads it across, but only into the the path of George Sanchez, who uh, is able to see it back to his goalkeeper. Diogo Costa, clearance from him. Wendell heads it infield towards Taremi, advances off Saliba into the path of Galeno, who takes it on, the dangerous Galeno, and slips over inside the penalty area and can only send the ball straight through for a goal kick. Well, I think Saliba just about had that under control. Gabriel has started to edge across from the other side of the pitch to show Galeno out of play, but they didn't have to. His foot in let him down, slipped straight onto his backside, but Porto on the counter a couple of times have already looked quite dangerous. Arsenal have to be careful. This is just... It's poison. I don't know what it is, Theo. It's, it's like a feeling, isn't it? You know, we've, you've been here before. Yeah. And, and hopefully it isn't the same outcome, but... You just feel that Arsenal are, are, are in a habit of not getting the right result off these type of fixtures. Hopefully, hopefully it goes well for them. We're yeah. talking about those habits right now that they need to break, like we said at the break. And yeah, Arsenal, they need to get out of this rut they're in right now. And it's one of those where no one wants to make a mistake. Yeah. Here's Saka receiving the ball from Rice, then plays it back. Odegaard, low pass into the penalty area, and Ketia back to Saka. But too many blue and white shirts in there. Excellent defending, actually, in the right places, in the right positions, and it's cleared out for a throw to Arsenal on the right flank. Well, they've done it all night. They've been in the right spot, right time, blue and white shirt, really good positioning. I mean, I thought Saka had plenty of time. Maybe he took too much time trying to get the ball onto his left foot, I think, and the block came in. And then it breaks down for Arsenal, but uh, Galeno passes it straight out of place. So it's a throw in to, to Arsenal. Sergio Conceição would almost lost it there in the way that uh, when uh, Galeno couldn't find the pass to Tereni. So uh, throwing to Arsenal. Arsenal here this season. This is new Arsenal. They've won 14 out of the 18 matches they've played here this season. Here is Zinchenko. And the Arsenal supporters almost on cue begin to get behind their team again. 10 minutes to go, 10 minutes of extra time. Five live on the world service from the BBC with Zinchenko centrally passing it forward towards Rice, then Zinchenko again, then White now back to Zinchenko. Once more, square from him, Declan Rice has a look over his shoulder. Declan Rice, arch scorer of late goals. Jesus receives it from him, Havertz, and then Pepe puts in the challenge, celebrates that challenge. Tackling it out of play. Arsenal thought that the combination there, Havertz and Jesus, was going to unpick the Porto lock. Now, halfway inside the Porto, half with Gabriel. Zinchenko is, for the time being, taken up a central role while Arsenal are dominating possession inside the Porto half. Zinchenko again, back to right, and then uh, there's a foul by 
and Ketty are in it's a free kick to Porto in the middle of their own half. Still and all square on aggregate. And it's one of those Nketiah, he's just been a bit naive there to, to create the foul. He's come from the wrong side. Um, just a bit too eager, disrupt the play. It's one of those that just frustrates, it slows it down again, exactly into the trap that Porto want right now. Free kick to Porto. Mikel Arteta is trying to, to orchestrate things, arms waving, fingers pointing. As uh, Diogo Costa takes this free kick downfield for Porto, but it comes back for Arsenal. Ikete just keeping it in, just down in front of us here, Jesus. In comes the, the challenge from Borges, and then it bounces out of play for what he's given as a, as a Porto throw. Mikel Arteta has picked the ball up and then eventually has to drop it, has to give it back to George Sanchez. And uh, now the fourth official, having having had his hands full with Sergio Conceição all night, now he's um, now he's having to talk to Mikel Arteta. Uh, Borges just keeps it in, then plays it back to the edge of the penalty area to Otavio. Otavio long and left-footed from him, that was rather a tired pass. Oh, it's missed by White, who might have been given a nudge yeah. by Galeno, he was. It's a free kick to Arsenal. Yeah, he was just nudged unfairly under the ball. I think he read it well, Ben Wright, and Galeno just gave him a little shove in the back where the ball was nowhere near them. It's a good, good read from the referee. You'll hear all the reaction on the Football Daily podcast in the morning from BBC Sounds. Might be an elated Mikel Arteta. It might be a crestfallen Mikel Arteta. It might be tonight they are left to concentrate on the league. But not yet. Zinchenko through to Inketia, who slips over as he tried to adjust on the turn. And so, therefore, Borge on the halfway line. That's an excellent challenge by Jesus. No, it's not. It's a foul. And, uh, and you, can, you can hear the Arsenal supporters, just like Mikel Arteta, just like some of the Arsenal players, hands on heads, free kick Porto. Well, you see two sides as in Zinchenko because the tackle comes about because for me Zinchenko doesn't tackle properly <clears throat> initially, doesn't really go into the challenge. It pops out and then Jesus has to come in. But just before that, a left foot pass into Aketia. I mean, with the ball, Zinchenko brings something completely different in that position, but out of possession, it just doesn't fill me with too much confidence, Theo. And that's the feel I, I have with Zinchenko. Like, he always likes to find his position in midfield and where I don't feel like he is a, a defender. No. Um, and, yeah, you want to bring him on to control the ball. Uh, maybe not so much with his defensive abilities right now. Jesus was un unfortunate. Took the ball, but took the man as well. So the free kick, Pepe takes it forward. Tereni carrying it infield. And uh, some very tired players out there. Saka bumps into Taremi, he goes down. Now, uh, Galeno keeps his feet, actually, does very well. The dangerous Galeno shoots from distance. It's deflected by uh, Gabriel, but it took a bit of the pace off it. And uh, Raya was able to pick it up. Then, then there's a foul centrally by uh, Drujic on Havertz. Free kick taken by Arsenal. Declan Rice. Five minutes to go. Five minutes before penalties to decide who goes through to the quarterfinals to draw on Friday morning. I feel like one of the, the messages that will be getting across to the Porto players right now, if you haven't got a book in, make sure you do by the end of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Back it goes to the edge of the penalty area. The final this season, remember, is in Wembley. Final is in London. That's quite a carrot in itself, Mikel Arteta has spoken about that this season, but it could all end here tonight in the next 15 minutes. Arsenal low with White, low into the edge of the penalty area, oh. just got away from Havertz there on the edge of the box, comes back to Saka on the right-hand side, Saka, oh, lovely little pass to Rice, but then Rice only succeeds in losing possession. Although Arsenal have won it back, given away by Zinchenko ball, and now... Pepe Quinho, he goes to ground, he was shoved over, that's going to be a yellow card for Havertz, who's yeah. been flirting with one all night. Yeah, it was a cynical trip, the wrong side, similar to the Jorginho tackle that went unpunished, but it's that man again, Pepe Quinho, when he wins the ball and he goes past you, there is no getting that guy back in and Havertz just trips him up on the way through Zinchenko gives the ball away sloppily and he tries to play one touch pass it was a really difficult ball to hit actually he was bouncing up with his left foot he wanted to keep the play going but 
that little turnover of possession in the middle of the pitch is a, is a real threat for Arsenal because they're so far advanced and quite well spread at the back that if Porto get one or two passes off, they could be high up the pitch. Porto with Pepe hoists a long pass forward, just teasing and curling it down into the fullback position. Uh, Tarani was was standing less than 10 yards away and actually Gabriel has passed it into him but referee Turpan has, has let that go which I think is probably sensible and it's a free kick to Arsenal and we've got three minutes to go three minutes before penalties Arsenal went out of Europe last season on penalties here at the Emirates Rai had to take this if they could find a goal now well the, the release of tension would be something Raya downfield headed forward though for Porto Gabriel nods it back and it's allowed to bounce out of play by Grich for another throw into Porto the cross comes Borges uh, Sanchez to take this George Sanchez right on the halfway line George Sanchez's throw is under the head of Zinchenko and he's headed it back into his own full-back position. Pepe Aquino is there, but strong defending from Gabriel. Ball still in play, it's turned away cleverly by Rice. And then Zinchenko, Jesus though, loses it. Still almost in his own left-back area. Sanchez now looking to play it across, but in steps Zinchenko and Nketiah. Important touch from him. Havertz, that was a little heavy. Pepe comes across. How must the 41-year-old Pepe be feeling? But he goes forward and wins a throw-in off Zinchenko. Looking smooth, John, if I'm honest. I mean, the way he got across there, Pepe saw the danger, saw Havertz going into the channel, stepped in. It was a sharp turn with the ball as well, came out. I mean, he just looked so good on his feet yeah. smooth, at this stage of the game. Smooth, not the first word that would come to mind to describe <laughs> Pepe. Oh. More rough, I would say. Oh. Got to take the rough with the smoother. Yeah, good point. Free kick, foul on Havertz. Free kick to Arsenal, and we've got 90 seconds to go. Theo. Yeah, but don't come to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, I can I can sense the tension. It's it's. I mean, even players you would expect to be comfortable on the ball right now, you've seen people making sloppy decisions, like we're saying about that physical output now. But people like Zinchenko has just come on to control the game. He's had a few sloppy moments. And of course, going into penalties, that can stay with players. So hopefully, this can this can sort of is, change right now. Is he a penalty taker? Yeah, he would be. He, he will be. be for me. Yeah. He'll definitely be stepping up. Uh, ball played forward by Rice into the penalty area, but goalkeeper Costa is able to come out and gather it and clutch it into his chest. He's uh, cradling it into his chest. And we are now in the final minute, the 120th minute. Just the one goal on the night. That excellent finish from Trossard. Seems like a long, long time ago now, in the 41st minute, to equalise the Galeno goal right at the end of the first leg. Here's Saka. Saka uh, is, is challenged and wins the free kick. Free kick then, set piece. Arsenal gather themselves. Arsenal's fans gather themselves. Little chorus of North London forever, maybe, and see where it goes. Rice is going to take this, and Ketia up to the edge of the penalty area. Havertz as well wanders up there, but they, he's going to leave it actually to Ben White to take this. White just adjusts the position of the ball, then passes it short, and with that, that is it. That is it. Well, that could have been delivered into the penalty area, and it wasn't. And um, there we are, it's going to be penalties to decide who goes through. Matt Ups and Theo Walcott. Well, I just think whether or not at that moment Arsenal are looking at it, I think the whole stadium's just feeling penalties now. Let's just get this over and done with. Let's get these penalties taken. I mean, it's there's not a lot separating the two teams. Porto been given a great account of themselves. They look pretty pumped, Theo, to be honest. They look really happy with how they've gone about their game plan this evening. And whether or not they can take that kind of resilience into this shootout, we'll have to wait and see. And not just this evening, the first leg from the first minute, they've been exceptional and done a job on Arsenal. They have. They've, they've, done their, they've done their homework. This is exactly what they wanted to go to penalties. We all had that feeling it might have gone to it. And now we're sitting here and they, you're right. It's, it may have deflated this Arsenal team again. Mikel's getting them all together and it's going to be a, probably one of his most important Maybe I'll have to get Stuart, the photographer, to get in there to do a little bit of a uh, <laughs> little rally call. <laughs>
No, but yeah, Porto, they've worked tremendously hard tonight. Uh, they've got to be very proud of what they've done um, to stop this Arsenal team. But again, who knows? Anything can go, go now. So, Arsenal 1, Porto 0, 1-1 on aggregate. And it is going to be penalties. Kelly Cates. It's all come down to penalties. Arsenal looking to get into the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time since 2010. Their Champions League campaign rests on, on these penalties, Theo. But when you look at what happened when Arsenal went out of Europe last season, yet in a different competition, and how that had a knock-on effect maybe in terms of their, their league form, is more riding on this even than just progression in the Champions League. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Kelly. Um, I feel, yes, we don't need this knock-on effect. It's Obviously, we don't know what's going to be happening yet, but there's that sort of nip it in the back of your mind of, is it going to be that same situation like last year? And you would hope that Mikel's sort of got that out of the players. I'm pretty sure he would have. What's really nice to see as well is they're so all together here and it's it's what Mikel's created. And you see Aaron Ramsdale there having a word with Raya before. The, the unity and the togetherness that he has for his goalkeeping companion right now. It's beautiful to see. So, you know, it's credit to all the players on that field tonight because this situation is not nice because I've been in this. In the, in the shootout last season in the Europa League, Odegaard, Saka and Trossard all scored before Martinelli had his penalty saved. But I, I think there, you know, Arsenal have got a lot of penalty takers, haven't they, who, who scored penalties this season. So Jorginho, of course, is now off the field. So he won't be involved. Vieira as well, a penalty taker. He's a new substitute tonight. But Odegaard, Saka, Havertz, you can, I'm pretty sure you can write them in. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I can't see many of these players shying away from it. And that's what you want. You want a, the players that are confident. They're, they would have practiced this, of course, we all know this. But again, it's one of those where you've got to make your mind up and stick with it and be together because there's going to be moments when you're going to have to be together. Is, is this where you're going to roll out some stat about Diogo Costa being an <laughs> unbelievable penalty? Uh, saver, now you mention it. Hopefully not. He actually saved three penalties <laughs> in one match in the Champions League last season. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> I was joking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but David Reyes saved yes. four penalties. Yeah, yeah, yeah in his career won this season but that was in the defeat here actually the, the West Ham game do you remember he saved it at the end yeah that's right right okay we've had the various uh, discussions Arsenal have got um, feels like they've got half of the Emirates Stadium standing on the touchline <laughs> must be about 75 people there with their arms around it, one another's shoulders uh, on the side of the pitch the players are in the centre circle uh, Martin Odegaard and Pepe 41 year old Pepe is seen it all the way through so we've had the coin toss the Porto fans are in the corner to our right but um, it looks as though they are turning to the left so it looks as though the penalties are going to be taken in front of the North Bank stand at the opposite end from the Porto fans yeah there was a big cheer when they, they did the coin toss there and again now you see the two goalkeepers the goalkeepers union walking towards the the, the area where they can be heroes right now. That, that has gone down well in the stadium, hasn't it? Let's face it. I think the Arsenal fans are delighted with that coin toss. So the referee, French referee, is talking to the two goalkeepers. So this, this, as you will know, is the the usual routine and the warning about moving off the line. So that's being made very clear to them. And actually, there are big questions being asked by Diogo Costa to the referee. There's a lot of nodding of heads going on. And uh, David Raya then turns away. David Raya, Spanish goalkeeper. Diogo Costa, Portuguese goalkeeper. And uh, the players actually have shuffled forward from the halfway line, the two sets of players. Normally they're right on the halfway line, but they're at, at the extreme end of the centre circle. And as well, sat right here now, seeing the amount of staff and the amount of support Striking. it's from the halfway line pretty much all the way down to the start of the 18-yard box the amount of people that are sort of interlocked in arms right now for the Arsenal setup. and um, it's Odegaard here first to take this penalty right here we go five live from the BBC late night drama at the Emirates a penalty shootout to decide who will go through to the quarterfinals Arsenal or Porto and it starts with the Arsenal captain Martin Odegaard the number eight Steps back to the edge of the penalty area. Thought he might have scored a second goal for Arsenal tonight. It was ruled out. Here he comes. Little steps. Left foot. Sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. A punch of the air. And a 
a big roar to the North Bank stand. And that's what you want for your first penalty taker, to set that tone, set that environment in this in this stadium. You can feel it. The small little run-ups, he sent the keeper the wrong way. Fantastic start, and this is exactly what Arsenal would have wanted. Uh, I'm, I'm just wondering whether did Diogo Costa do something there? Because there's been quite a reaction inside the ground. Or maybe it's just because the first Porto player, Pepe Aquino, is walking forward. They're doing their best to distract him. All the f scarves are being waved in the stand behind the goal where David Raya stands with his palms and his arms wide apart on the line. Pepe Aquino walks out to his left and will take this right-footed and sends Raya the wrong way. Very good opening penalty for Porto, 1-1. Yeah, never really felt any doubt in that. It was very calm. He had a funny run-up. He kind of started straight on with the ball and had this little shimmy to the left, then approached the ball, little stutter, little, really popular quick feet stutter into the ball. But a lovely smooth strike to Reyes right, bottom corner, good penalty. Well, no surprises yet for Arsenal. It is Kai Havertz after Odegaard. It's Havertz, Kai Havertz, Champions League final winning goal scorer himself. Left footed penalty, walks back now, one foot in front of the other, five yards run up, little steps to begin with, slight hesitation, and then scores low into the bottom corner. Costa went the wrong way to his right. Do you know, I was watching Havertz when he was walking up and he, he placed the ball a number of times before he was happy with it. And that's what you've got to be as a player. And as well, he did his small little shimmies that seemed to be a slight pattern. Stopped before, looked at the keeper. Again, sent the wrong way, the same way as Odegaard went down to Porto. Next for Porto, one of the players of the night, Wendell. The left back. The Brazilian. Who places the ball in the quadrant. And again, the Emirates doing his best to put him off. But he's standing there, hair stacked high and comes up left-footed, and he's missed it! Raya diving to his left, whether he got a touch, I think he did, the way that he's celebrating, a fingertip round the post, it's saved, and Arsenal lead 2-1 after two penalties each. Wow, it's just fabulous anticipation from David Raya. Wendell, as you mentioned, being the player of the night, it wasn't the best of penalties, it kind of ricochets back off of him, I think he the touched post. it onto the post, tipped onto the post, then onto his heels. And how that hasn't gone back in the back of the <laughs> it's net, remarkable. I, I can't believe it hasn't gone in. It, it should just hit the post, hit him in the back and go in, but it didn't. Oh. This is, these are the fine margins of, the, of this game. Saka is not wasting any time. What a penalty history he has. Bukayo Saka now. A shorter run up and then scores decisively. Even though Costa dived the right way to his right, it was past him in a flash. And that is now 3-1 Arsenal. And again, I, I feel like with Saka, he's taking responsibility of being the penalty take for Arsenal this year. And again, the small little shimmies, again, it seems to be a little bit of a pattern. And opens it up, keeper's right. Again, brilliant from Saka. That's the confidence that man's playing with right now. Pressure's on Porto now. Mind you, I've seen plenty of penalty shootouts where the team that misses first ends up going through but Grich Grich now the pressure is intense on the Porto number 8 and the Serbian steps up and scores a very good penalty even though Raya diving to his left got a hand to it couldn't keep it out it was high and it's yeah. in and it's 3-2 Arsenal it just had the height I think the height kept it through put it in the back of the net Raya guesses same side again, gets a good hand to it, but it's high enough so the fingertips can't tip it round the post and it just goes into the corner of the net. David Raya looking good in goal, actually. Looks really athletic and able to cover either side. Well, David Raya gets the ball, hands it to Declan Rice, who bounces it three times on the ground, stares at the spot, places it down. Declan Rice, Arsenal have scored three out of three so far in the shootout for a place in the Champions League quarterfinals. Rice scores! in the North London drizzle and punches the air. That is 4-2 Arsenal. If you were going to have someone in this Arsenal 
setup that was going to take one of the crucial penalties. Declan Rice has been that man all season for, for Arsenal, the, the way he's taken responsibility in that middle of the park. Obviously, he's moved on that big fee. He was no nonsense. He didn't hang around to take that as well. And again, very confident straight down the middle. It's a big moment right now. Well, we've reached the business end of the shootout. And it is Galeno, the excellent Winderson Galeno, who is going to take this next penalty for Porto. Arsenal have scored four out of four. Wendell missed his. And now Galeno must score. Otherwise, Porto are out and Arsenal are through. The lights are on in the stands. And up comes Galeno! Champions League for the first time under Mikel Arteta for the first time for 14 years and the Emirates in the North London drizzle roars a big sigh of relief Theo Walcott, Matt Upson can you even see him in my seat right now? I've just sunk him right down <laughs> I mean I've not even played tonight and I've just feel drained I mean those not just the players, the fans have been with this whole team and You've got to give so much credit to, to Porto. They've been fantastic, but again, it's, it's this moment like that. Rea tonight, he's, he's been a hero. He's made two fantastic saves. I mean, again, the first person to him there, and he didn't even play with Ramsdale. How quickly he got to him. That just shows the togetherness in this whole setup, and it seems to be a lot of disruption going on uh, amongst the... There's a little bit of nonsense, Mikel Arteta. I mean, there's so many play people gathered out there in the middle, and actually, Mikel Arteta... Is, uh, is is telling his team, I think, to, to move away from it all, and he's telling, he's actually saying to Porto's people to, to, to move away and go and gather themselves in the centre circle, and Arsenal are walking away, all of the Arsenal players, into into the corner in front of the North Bank stand. You know, just a little bit of, it's just spoiled over that. Yeah, sensible from Mikel Arteta, actually, just to identify it and say, look, let's just put a little bit of distance between the... The staff, more than anything, I'd say, John, it just got a little bit heated. Few of the players, but Arsenal, massive celebration. David Ray, I just looked at the replay again. It was a nice height for him, that final penalty. But his anticipation has been absolutely spot on. The reading of the, the run-up and the body language of the players taken, there's so much detail that goes into these shootouts and the, the information that the goalkeepers have. He's been absolutely bang on. Uh, there were words between Mikel Arteta and Sergio Conceição yep. at the end of the match and, and whether there was a handshake I'm not sure if there was or not uh, but that might well have been a, a part of that and Sergio Conceição has actually gathered all of his players together in the centre circle they're, they're, they're going for a mass huddle here great disappointment for them great effort from the, no one no one fancied Porto coming into the sky it was thought that Arsenal would, would breeze through it absolutely far from it and I was one of them I did feel that Arsenal would breeze through it and they, they, they really didn't and Porto have, have like you said before they've, they've sent a message out to how you can stop this Arsenal team in a different way um, you know they're, they're going to their, their away support now it's been absolutely fantastic this whole night probably the first one in this in the stadium ahead of us guys and it's, 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 you know it's very disappointing but they've got to be very proud of themselves they've worked tremendously hard you've got Gabriel now and Odegaard that are going to the other end of the stadium just to congratulate the fans on how well they supported them but credit to all the players on that pitch tonight because they all left everything out there yeah I mean bar the, the slight lapse of concentration from the right back Jao Mario that, that allowed Trossard in it was a near perfect execution of a game plan and, and the tactical awareness of the players the way uh, the manager had set them up to know how to defend Arsenal how to frustrate them it, they gave a great account and said, took it to the wire but the belief and the confidence and the quality of this Arsenal team is just rolling on yeah and in the end it was the man with the biggest hands in football who made the save David Raya 
to clinch it for Arsenal and that involved, don't forget, that quite big stroke of fortune when the Wendell penalty hit the post, bounced back and didn't bounce in the net. But there we are, small margins, fine margins, Arsenal are through, quarter finalists, Arsenal won, Porto nil after extra time and Arsenal 4-2 winners in the penalty shootout. Kelly. John Murray is at the Emirates, Matthew Watson and Theo Walcott. Theo, I think I counted over 50 members of Arsenal coaching staff, backroom staff, on the edge of the pitch watching that penalty shootout, all linking arms, all supporting each other. Tens of thousands of people inside the stadium and 11 players out on the pitch. This feels like a concerted effort. And as well, you you feel that. It's the energy that, that provides, not just the guys that are standing on the you're saying 50 you've got the whole stand in it, it it just feeds into the players and it we were sucking the ball in we really were all of them everyone here and Arsenal yeah they found it very difficult tonight they really did Porto did a job on them they, again they really did but Arsenal have been managed just to break that pattern that they've been dying to do for, for many a time and as well now going into the, the fixtures now the Premier League how much confidence this is going to bring look they're going to be they won't be able to walk, I'm pretty sure, tomorrow, but again, they're going to have to recover. And this is going to be a big statement, I feel, in the Premier League as well. I really do. Well, Arsenal won't be playing this weekend, of course, because they're not in, in FA Cup action. So the next time these players will play is when they go off to play with their, their international side. So they will need that time to recover after what's been a draining 120 minutes of yeah. football plus penalties. It's probably good timing, isn't it? And I just feel that they've gained so much from this match. We're talking about experiencing these nights, experiencing difficult, wily opponents like Porto. And they've come through it. They understand what it takes to win the game. So there's so many positives. Yes, the result's massive. But the fallout from it, i.e. Premier League, i.e. the growth of this group and the belief of this group, a lot of positives for Arsenal tonight. It does, it does feel very odd, doesn't it, that the team at the top of the Premier League and in the Champions League quarterfinals in March now has two and a half weeks yeah. off. Was it the 31st of... 31st of, of and obviously the internationals. Well, sorry, the yeah. players would like to point out that it's not time off if they're away with their countries. Good point, Kelly. <laughs> so it's, it's not, they're not able to go and have the break. We saw the reaction when they, they went off to Dubai and had that time away and, and they came back refreshed and, and ready to go. But this, is the, this feels like the kind of result, the kind of occasion, Theo, that can spark a kind of new lease of life in Arsenal in the run into the end of the season. And it's one of those as well, people will sit here thinking, look, Arsenal, we want to play, keep playing and playing. No, I think it's important for them to actually recover, not just physically, but mentally from this, and to go have a different scenery as well. They've been working so hard week in, week out. Training, oh, I'm telling you what, training's not going to be easy. So, again, I think it's going to be a nice distraction the way they can go away international. Mikel will be praying for his players to obviously look after themselves, of course, but players are so passionate for playing for their countries. Yes, some play friendly, some play competitions, of course, but Mikel will be biting his fingernails, I'm sure, and make sure that everyone comes back fit. But whether they worked on penalties or not, when they were away in Dubai, I mean, those penalties <laughs> were, were excellent, weren't they? Hung, hungry eyes, you might say. Oh, for the yeah, Arsenal in, in memory takers. of Eric Carmen, of course. Um, David Raya, the hero of the evening with two penalty saves, he's told TV should have been three saves from the penalties. He wanted even more from that. Oh, it was, it was bonkers, wasn't it? I mean, Wendell, who I really feel for, I thought he was top draw all night. The way he handled Saka, he was reliable, he was there to the end. I saw him step up and I thought to myself, if he puts his penalty in the back of the net, he's had some game. And he was that close. I mean, it hits the, it's tipped on the onto the post, in fairness to Raya. But ha the angle, it comes back, and then it hits the heels of the goalkeeper and goes wide. I mean, that normally would just go in the back of the net. So, again, the margins are there, but Arsenal didn't need it. Yeah, they just look so, they look so comfortable and assured their players stepping up to the mark. And, you know, as Theo said in, in, in the commentary, Declan Rice, in that crucial penalty there, really putting the pressure on Galeno to have to score for Porto was just too much for them. Rice in his veins, you might be able to say. <laughs> or, you know, if you were making a really bad joke. Very um, good. Theo, look, you, you both touched on, the, on this as well. Is what Arsenal will take from this in terms of the learning experience, in terms of coming up against that? And I know Mikel Arteta said we've, we've had games in the Premier League where teams come to frustrate us. This Porto side on a different level in terms of the gamesmanship and in terms of the, the time wasting, all the tricks came out. 
and as well the experience of being in the penalty shootout and winning it that that's a, that the players will remember these moments and know what to do they, they really will and in the situations that Porto frustrate them yes they will understand that and not rise to it and I think yeah they're going to learn so much from this game they really are going into of course the the, 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 the you know the quarterfinals of course and if they can go further than that you know fingers crossed for for us all just to see how strong this Premier League is right now it, it was good that it didn't go their way and I, I, I think that's a, the massive positive they're, they're at home the match did not go in the direction that Arsenal wanted it to and time and time again we've seen that end badly for Arsenal teams have upset them they've ruffled them it's not quite been the game plan they've wanted and, and they haven't won they've seen it through tonight it's been rugged it's been a bit of a scrap you know there's been rows on the bench Havertz is shoving the coach and it's been that kind of game it's been entertaining in that way and it's not what you usually see with Arsenal and I think it's, it's a little bit different it's got an edge to it interesting stuff yeah not too many yellow cards on the pitch but both managers were yellow carded in yeah. that game as well everybody was was getting involved the tensions were high inside the stadium and Arsenal have, have come away and, and Theo it's that sort of cliche if you like about learning more in defeat so learning more in difficult situations than you learn in, in easy ones yeah exactly that Kelly you, um, I mean you hit the nail on the head there's always going to be difficult moments in the game particularly like we were saying in the comms about when you switch off mentally when you played so so long in a match where you still need to do a job and any mistake can be costly um, we saw the, the goal which was a mistake when Trossard obviously capitalised on that and that was early on in the game but that's where you've got to give credit to everyone on that field, how the fitness levels I was really impressed with. Considering the the pace and the ability that the players play, play at, at Arsenal particularly, it's, big, it's brilliant to see and I, hopefully it can continue. Arsenal are through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time in 10 years. They've beaten Porto 4-2 on penalties, 1-0 on the night, one all after 120 minutes and up next for them is the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Up next for us here on Five Live, it's Gordon Smart. <laughs> 